Welcome back to Honor and Armies on Vorpal Tales. I am Eric at Maroon Recluse on Twitter, your games master for this terrifying tale series that continues with our current storyline, You. Due to the mature themes of horror and violence explored in our tale, we encourage listener discretion. We are Vorpal Tales and we play a wide assortment of games seven days a week that fall into two categories, awesome adventures and terrifying tales. Be sure to check the calendar on VorpalTales.com to stay up to date with all of our shows. In the way of shout outs uh, today, we have Tabletop Titties is a queer and feminist TTRPG podcast and streaming group run entirely by people of marginalized genders. Their second season of their D&D show, Into the Rebellia, follows our heroes from season one as they take on Hit Point Press's hilarious horror carnival module, Hekna. Every Tuesday, live at twitch.tv slash tabletop titties at 7 p.m. Pacific time, starting June 1st and in edited podcast form every Friday. Their second show, Titties by Night, is a Vampire the Masquerade V5 show starring a coterie of supernatural investigators as they solve mysteries in Victorian London. Catch all the vampiric action Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. Pacific on Twitch and in podcast form on Saturdays. For more information, visit tabletoptitties.com. And remember, every time we say titties, it's with double Ds. This month, uh, we are taking donations to support Love Your Rebellion. Uh, Love Your Rebellion is a charity organization composed of fantastic people who do amazing work supporting marginalized groups through the arts. We are adding incentives all month long for all of our live plays. Among these reward tiers are the minor and major tables of chaos. That's right, donate to a great charity for a great cause and generate massive amounts of chaos in our games. Also, we have a set of milestones we are striving to reach. Currently, we have reached our, uh, I want to say, sixth or seventh milestone by now. Uh, which means some people are dyeing their hair purple for the month and showing up as a wrestler uh, for the course of five games this week. So it should be fun. We actually uh, Angel- <laughs> hit the the eating gross things one, our thirteen hundred oh. milestone. We're we're deep in the milestones oh, now. We're 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 in double digit milestone territory yeah. now. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, also, don't forget, on July 23rd, we will be running two back-to-back one-shots as part of our fundraising effort with a variety of guest players, uh, beginning with Blue Rose, jammed by Rachel, and Extreme Meat Punks Forever by Steve. Uh, give generously if and when you can, and enjoy all the wonderful rewards. Check out Atlas Games' a suite of tabletop RPGs and board games on atlas-games.com, where you can get a physical or digital copy of awesome games like Auto Armies. Remember to follow Vorpal Tales on Twitch. Visit our website and find a link to join our Discord. We're on most major social media outlets, including YouTube, where you can catch up on previous episodes. So remember to follow, subscribe, and hit the bell to get all the updates. Vorpal Tales is also on Drive-Thru RPG, by the way. Check out some of our very own Vorpal Tales supplements that include characters, monsters, and scenarios made for many of the games we play weekly. We want to thank Atlas Games for making awesome games for us to play and for providing support for their players. Special credit shoutouts go to Nocturnum, spelled N-C-T-R-N-M, for the use of their song, Driveway Mix 2, least upper bound and repulsive sound for their tracks as well. Check out more awesome tunes at nocturnum.bandcamp.com, secretpress.bandcamp.com, as well as on YouTube, Instagram, and SoundCloud under Repulsive Sound. Also, a very special thanks for our resident rock stars at Nate Mid and our producer, Corey, uh, for helping to design our awesome character sheets for Astral. And lastly, but not least, a warm thanks to our listeners and fans for tuning in. Our adepts and avatars of the underground are here and ready to bring their fork to the table. Players, tell your, our audience who you are, where they can find you online, and who you will be playing this afternoon. Beginning with John. All right, John found his unmute button. And so therefore, I am J3 Billion, otherwise known as John... And I will be reprising our role as Mr. Sean Krogan Ford. And uh, he is our avatar of the warrior. Excellent. Uh, Alan. Hey guys, I'm Alan. And uh, you can find me on uh, Twitch and Twitter as the Eldritch Keeper. And today I'll be uh, still playing Damien Darkwood, the Anthropomancer. Uh, Corey. Hey there, I'm Corey, uh, and I'll be playing Jesse, our uh, resident BattleBots engineer turned BattleBot? Question <laughs> mark. Yes, indeed. And our newest player, uh, introduction to Mike. Tell the good people who you are. Uh, 
My name is Mike Leader. Uh, today I'll be playing Jace, our failed comedian with anger issues, uh, who is incredibly lucky, I guess you could say, or not. <laughs> depends on the, it depends on the moment, I guess. Uh, you can find me online on Twitter at uh, Dr. Fusion with a Z. Excellent. All right, thank you. And now for a very short recap. Uh, previously, exploring the interiors of the abandoned house, William found the source of Fernwood's strange auras coming from a basement. Sean, William, and Damien attempted to open the padlock door. And William fell through the rotted wood and tumbled down the stairs. At the bottom of the basement, he found a mountain of randomly seeming mementos and keepsakes that almost reaches the ceiling. With his occult knowledge, he realized that someone here had attempted to recreate an entire town and its inhabitants from various pieces of nostalgia from different points in time. Fernwood was not real. From the depths of the basement and from around the premises of the house, the Cabal was besieged by mechanical automatons depicted as lawn gnomes and raptors. Alex e expertly shot and destroyed one of the gnomes automatons with her handgun. Sean used a raptor as a baseball bat and knocked uh, two, the two constructs down the stairs. Will collapsed the stairs uh, that were weakened, uh, leaving the automaton stranded in the basement of the house. Back at the barn, Jesse finished work on the tree ant, a human-sized tree stump with limbs and a hole from which a fire-breathing mouth emerges. Lucy watched with patience and admiration, calling him Jefferson and letting it be known that she and Dottie had been waiting for a long time for his return. She then proceeded to peel her skin back to reveal that she too was an automaton. It was time for him to follow her back home. As they drove to the house on the hill, an old man waved at them from the nearby lighthouse. Jesse's tree ant appeared just in time as the rest of the cabal fled the basement mob of automatons. The construct began laying waste to the depths of the house with its flamethrower. As the flames spread, they saw Fernwood's lights beginning to dim and wink out. Realizing what was going on, Lucy attempted to sway Jesse to spare their house and its memories from destruction. When it became clear to both ladies that the cabal was there to destroy what was causing Fernwood to become real, Lucy and Dottie stripped off their clothes and silently walked into the flames with grim determination. Their mission complete, the rest of the team made their way to the van, leaving behind the memory of a town. Driving an hour back from the coast, they checked into a motel just outside of the small New England town of Belmont. Waking up the next day to an emergency alert system broadcast and blaring car alarms. The crawling texts cautioned residents to stay indoors and to comply with the recently deployed National Guard. Something major was taking place within the area surrounding Belmont. Looking outside, Damien saw something he couldn't easily describe. A large majority of the people at the motel were outside turning over cars, eating one another alive, running and laughing hysterically, and other bizarre and terrible acts. Realizing that only they and a select few were spared this chaos, the Entropomancer began trying to reach the rest of the team. No signal, no dial tone. Resorting to banging on doorways, he entered Sean and William's room. Just as he entered, William began going into convulsions. After a moment, he awoke handcuffed to a metal bar bolted onto the wall of an empty and darkened room. Looking at his hands and how he was dressed, he realized that he was no longer in his own body. Struggling to break free, he saw a glint of light shine through a sliding aperture at a nearby door. Take it easy, Frank. Wouldn't want you to hurt yourself, would you? A guard posted outside the door teased before sliding the vanity cover back over the viewing slot. Looking at his reflection at a nearby mirror, William saw the face of Frank Gordon staring back at him. Meanwhile, back at the hotel, William's body rose back up. The wards that poured out of him next were not his own, however. Speaking for the first time ever to his own son, Frank cautions Sean that Gus and his people had caused him several setbacks recently. This was their first and final cautionary warning. The world is still on course to end soon. He and his allies are trying to stop reality's perpetual cycle of death and rebirth. If he wants to see Jackson alive again, you will find out Gus's true name and give it to him. Otherwise, Frank warned and pointed to what was happening outside, that will be coming to a neighborhood near you, the world over. Damien recognized what was happening outside at last. Frank Gordon and his allies caused hundreds of people to become possessed by demons from beyond the veil. With that, Frank relinquished control 
and William found himself in his own body again. Just in time, too, the riot that was taking place outside began to bleed over into many of the adjoining rooms. Lucius spotted military helos in the air nearby, and National Guardsmen walking the streets just outside the motel. It wasn't long before the shooting started, scattering many of the frenzied people outside into hiding. With the chaos threatening to seep into in through broken doors and windows, the team began moving toward Lucius's van downstairs. The guardsmen noticed the movement and focused their fire on the second floor of the motel, peppering some of the team. Damien used his chaos magic to inscribe sigils onto a child's baseball and threw it in the direction of the guards. Something caused the nearby frenzied mobs to believe that they weren't a threat and proceeded to hoard them, giving the Cabal a chance to escape. Jumping into Lucius's van, the group drove through a throng of people and never looked back. Damien and Sean sought to make their own way out of the hotel while William snuck out of his own and escaped into the sewers. Coming across a man who was under assault by two of the crazed possessed people, Sean clobbered both of the, the trio and the trio made their way down to the car. Tailgating behind Lucius's van, they successfully escaped the chaos outside. Seeing a National Guard blockade ahead, the team braced for incoming fire. Damien took a chance and exited the vehicle while it was in motion, risking tremendous personal harm and used his chaos magic to make the firing mechanisms inside each of the National Guardsmen's rifles explode simultaneously. Driving free of the blockade, they jumped the medium and began heading towards Laconia and away from the sudden aerial bombardment of Belmont. And that's what happened last session. Welcome to the chaos, everybody. All right, so, and speaking of which, uh, we're going to start the game off right today uh, because we reached a, a pretty major milestone recently and we have some pretty decent donations uh, that were made uh, last uh, in the previous evening. We have a major chaos roll that was made uh, prior to the start of today's game, and that will result in the following. A totally original uh, major chaos uh, entry. The next item, locale, NPC, etc. must be an exact carbon copy from a popular franchise, and players and GM are unable to make reference to the fact that it is totally that one thing from the thing and must act normally. <laughs> so, <laughs> we will uh, we'll come up with something uh, about that All in right. just a moment. We can make that the 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 NPC driver, the guy that the uh, Sean saved from the motel. If you want to, it, it was some dude who was under attack, and he used his car to get you out of there, out of the motel as it was being besieged. So we can we could apply that to him or to whatever comes after that in this next upcoming scene. I'll let uh, you all decide if you want to go that route or not. We have already had some suggestions in the chat. Uh, that uh, Samara from the Ring, <laughs> which seems kind of appropriate for something like on an army. But uh, oh, any other takers or, or anybody want to back that uh, nomination? Samara is the long girl, the girl with long hair, right? I believe so. Yeah. The the, the terrifying one. Yeah. Up to that movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I say we go for we the next go scene. That. Yeah. Sure. That makes sense. Okay. So let's see. We just cleared the National Guardsmen out in the, um, just outside of uh, Belmont in New Hampshire. We're gonna switch gears here and head over to the next scene, which I'm gonna say is several hours after that escapade, you all escaped barely with your lives, uh, seeing what, what just happened back there. It's pretty evident that whatever it is that um, Frank Gordon is planning is not good for everybody. And by the way, the only people who know what's going, what what actually happened back there would be Sean, uh, William, who's not with you anymore, and uh, Damien. Those are the only three people that that know what is actually taking place right now. Uh, so we'll start with you all driving down the highway. Um, I'm, I'm going to say that uh, Lucius is driving. You decide where exactly you want to get uh, off the highway if you want to drive into the, like the next city or whatever, which is, would be Laconia. It's a small town, actually. It's all small towns in this area of uh, New Hampshire. And uh, I think the other person who was driving was the NPC character, whose name you don't know. Uh, a fairly portly guy, dark skin. Uh, he's driving He's driving his vehicle, and he helped you escape the motel. Uh, 
he's just he's all kinds of scared and he doesn't know what's happening so he's similarly confused but he's waiting on you to basically like decide like hey pull off over here or whatever because he, he just he you seem to know what's happening and he doesn't um so we'll start with uh sean in the vehicle with the the npc character uh damien dropped off uh out of the car uh and, and uh, those national guardsmen are still out there uh the you know, the guy who's driving the car doesn't seem to be keen on turning back around and going back. He's just flooring it, and he's going as fast as humanly possible. Unless you do something else, you're going to keep going in a straight line until he, just, you or him decide to get off the highway. Hey, uh, uh you, you all right? <sighs> he's just like, he's, he's like saying, all right, he's, let's, he's speaking let's... another language. You, you don't understand what he's saying, but he's just like, he's obviously scared. But just kind of let's calm down a, l a little bit. We're out of the city. There's no one around for miles. Let's take the speed down to not break your necks if you fall out the window. Speed. Let's pull what over happened back there? Um, yeah. So there's a bunch of possessed people. That's besides that. Let's let's calm down he a little makes bit. Makes the sign of the cross, you know. He, so you notice he has like a crucifix hanging from his uh, his rear view. You know, so look, uh, what's going on? It's really not that big a deal. It happens every day. Um, I need you to calm down. <laughs> He's just like trying to focus on his breathing. He's just tailgating the van uh, that Lucius is driving down the highway as fast as humanly possible. This is in the middle of the day. Like this is in the afternoon. Uh, so it's 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 still like noon time there's no traffic uh going backwards and forwards on the highway uh, a lot of as a matter of fact as you start getting closer uh, further down the the way you see like there are open blockades that you can not not blockades but open like um there's just barriers like uh, construction barriers that are set up and you can kind of weave in between and you see tra traffic being diverted uh from the major highways you see like local uh highway patrolmen and stuff like that are directing traffic like you know come this way etc like making sure everybody's like uh, diverting through the uh, appropriate exits and avoiding what's going on in Belmont. Uh, I say we get like maybe a half hour down the road and just uh, pull over and grab some grab something to eat. <laughs> he doesn't register what you're saying. He's just like looking in the rear view, and he's like he keeps like looking back there because he, I mean, he was just shot at. So his nerves are like, uh, you know, he's completely shot. You can, uh, you, I think you've made your violence checks when, you know, people were shooting at you. So you're not okay, but you're, you're maintaining no. your, your calm as much as possible. No. <laughs> you have to be a certain kind of hard, I guess, to come Pardon. out of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a certain, a certain kind of very, uh, used to violence, um, mm -hmm. to come out of that one. But it, it, all right, I need you. Let, let's let's not kill ourselves by tailgating them. So let's slow down a little bit. I'm gonna give you ten minutes. We'll come back to it. We we're gonna have to pull off the road and find out what we're doing next. Whether <laughs> I'm going with them or you're taking off on your own, we're gonna have to figure it out. So okay. let's let, let's give them, let's calm down a little bit, and then we'll figure out what's going on. All right. Okay, okay. Uh, try roll connect for me real quick. He might, because for all we know, he might just be nodding his head, but he doesn't actually understand what the hell you're saying to him. I mean, I mean, that's fair. Like you did. I, I would be seriously stressed out. Uh, connect. Be, all right, got a 45 in that one. Let's see what kind of damage we can do to that. Hey, you uh, nailed 15. it. You actually managed to reach him on, on some level. I can make eye contact with him in the rear view or whatever as you're like looking back and you're like, hey, look, look at me. Like, it's going to be okay. We need you to just, I need you to calm down. He's like, okay, I, I understand. He says, and he, he pull, eventually he's like follows the van as you're pulling off the highway and stuff. Um, um, I'm assuming you want to stop in somewhere. Uh, <laughs> uh, do you call Lucius? I mean, once you get out of Belmont's uh, no cell phone uh, reception area, because they shut it down, 
um, you can actually call Lucius and or anybody else who's in the van and, and coordinate if you want to. Yeah, I'll, I'll give him a call and say, hey, look, um, I, I here with another person. Uh, we need to pull off. Answer. Yeah, she's like, hey, what happened to Damien and William? Are they with you? Uh, Damien, it, that's a long story. William is a longer story. Are you okay? No, we don't have time for long stories. Did, are they with you or are they not with you? And if not, uh, where are they? They're not with me currently. Um, we need to have a conversation. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, so you, you hear her like telling Lucius in the car, like, pull over as soon as you can. I don't care where. Eventually they pull into like a McDonald's, you know? <laughs> I hear them uh, saying that. I'm going to try calling Damien. Sure. Damien, your phone rings. You just rolled out of a car moving at like 60 miles an hour, so you're not feeling great. <laughs> there are cars that are on fire around you. National Guardsmen are just up ahead. Some of them Can I get a charge out of that? Oh, yeah. You got a huge charge out of that. And you have oh. to use it to buy them uh, an escape out of their current predicament. Oh, uh, so, so I lost it. Okay. <laughs> you take some, you lose some, you know? <laughs> okay. So that means like the, the, how many charge should, should I? Because right now, uh, last time I played, I was at two minor charge. Uh, give yourself Oops. another two minor charges. All right. And, uh, yeah, you, you're just recovering from rolling out of that car, and you're just like, oh, God, everything hurts. You feel like cuts and bruises all over your body. Uh, oh, I'm still walking, right? Good. Oh, I yeah, still you're still stand. walking. All right, all right. Yeah, I, take a look at my, uh, like, I take a look at the phone. Who's calling? Uh, it looks like it's uh, – who's who's calling? Is it Lucius that's calling, or are you calling? Jesse. Yeah. Jesse. Jesse's calling? Yeah. Uh, I'm picking up, and I'm, yeah. Where the fuck are you guys? Uh, we had to keep driving. We didn't know you yeah, were well, with uh, Sean. You answer you the know. phone. You answer the phone. And it's like bip, bip, every other word is is going bye bye. Oh goddamn it! And you realize like oh, and you're looking up at the helicopters overhead, and you're like oh right, they're. Fucking up the signal, right? Can't, can't Could see. I spend a charge to make the communication go well for a few minutes? Sure, make a roll. Okay, okay. so let's go here. Where is my uh, so anthropomancer? And that's a uh, match, match success. success. Wow! So you're just like, God damn phone! Like you just like smack it and you concentrate on it for a second and then it's like crystal clear quality you can hear everything that's happening oh, hey i can actually hear you now <laughs> can you hear me now <laughs> yeah good all right all right where, where, where are you guys at uh we pulled off the road i don't know how far up are we probably a couple miles there you're in you're in uh laconia right now you're in the next town over like five miles ten miles probably like 15, 20 miles, something like that. Wow, okay. Uh, are you guys going to be laying low somewhere that I can meet up? Uh, we haven't found a spot yet, but I'll let you know when we do. I'll text you. Um, All right, but we're heading towards be Lacona. Because they're right now they're jamming signals. Well. Hmm. How are you planning to get out? Do you need any help? Yeah. Sorry, that that wasn't correct. On the highway, it's something like 1.6 miles. It's like just under okay. two miles down the road. Yeah, you yeah, can jog it's there. Not, it's not that bad. Uh, I don't know. I'll pull up Google Maps since I have good reception and see if I can like, I don't know, find a wooded area that Damien might be able to escape through rather than plenty roads. around. Yeah, plenty of those. It looks like if you head a little bit southeast, you'll be able to get out. You know, through the woods as, instead of as Jesse says that he pulls Damien's gonna pull out the compass on his phone and just orient himself and go that direction. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, roll, roll secrecy with a bonus. I'll give you a twenty percent bonus to secrecy. See if you can sneak past the uh, blockade. secrecy. So secret. Mm -hmm. Okay. With a bonus of how much? 20%. 20%. So that means I need 
55 and under. 79. <laughs> Reroll. <All right. laughs> Reroll. Okay. <laughs> I got re rolls left. And I don't want to get picked up like these. Just so you know, Mike, uh, in this game, if you get votes at the end, uh, they turn into rerolls. Uh, so basically, if you if you if you mess up really badly, you can go use one of those rerolls to just reroll the dice. But the second time, you have, you have to take what you get. And the twenty percent, which is fifty five, I got forty seven. Woo! Just made it. Nice. All right. So like, <laughs> you see, like the National Guardsmen are getting up and they're trying to figure out what the hell just happened, while how all of their rifles exploded simultaneously, and with some of them having been killed because of it. Yeah, uh, and they're, they're attending to their wounded, and you're just like, exit stage left. <laughs> you just like leave right off the side of the the highway, and you go running into the gutters and into the um, uh, into the mediums and into the woods on the other side of the highway. Uh, and with that, you're you're gone. <laughs> you managed to sneak past their blockade. There's no one so wise that you're you're out right. running on foot out that way. Even the helicopters overhead are just like buzzing by. They're not like look, you know, like going in your direction or anything like that. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So we'll advance time a little bit. Uh, you all pull over to the side of the road, and you're just like, you're waiting for Damien to show up. Well, I had a thought about that actually. Um, hmm. Is there a place that has four by fours here? Uh, I mean, you'd have to go down the street. It's a small town. Yeah, it's uh, a little so bit. Like a yeah. used car dealership, maybe, is the best you can do. <laughs> you don't get that. Uh, you had contact with Damien, right? You said you called him? Yeah. How, you, yeah. how, how far away is he? Alex is He's sort of exasperated foot. and she's like, He's heading. He's heading our way. What? We don't. We still don't know what happened to William, your your ancestor. He, yeah, she says and points to uh, Sean, and uh, uh, and Damien. Like, what the hell happened to them out there? Um. Well, Damien did Damien things. Um, <laughs> what the hell does that mean? <laughs> You know how he looked at my wound the other day and it was just universe bullshit? Oh, uh, right. He's just in the weird chaos he magic He literally shit. jumped out of the car. Oh, my God. And he... All I saw was a bunch of pops. <laughs> Is he okay? National Guard. Uh, uh, Jesse's <laughs> been in contact with him, so I'm assuming yes. He looks at Jesse like, he's he hurt? Is he's he all an ambulance or... So he sounded fine, and sorry, my dog just really wants to be on the show today. I, I... <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> he made it on. He's Poor good babies. for him. <laughs> uh, she just like puts her head in her hands, like this. This has to stop. This is insane. We need to call Gus. We need to get. He needs to be here right oh, now. Hold like... on, hold on. That's the other part of this. Um. So before we left, I had a con. I had a conversation with. Uh, my dad. Really dad. <laughs> Congratulations, he says, <laughs> not realizing what you're implying. The man we're hunting, the man who's... Gordon. Frank Gordon? Yeah, Frank Gordon. My dad. He, what, he called he, you? In a manner of speaking, he, uh... I don't know how... But he possessed my grandfather. Your ancestor, yeah. Not sure how far Is back it? that goes. Let's call him relative. Wait a minute. He can do. He can just do that. Uh, I don't think he can do that to me, or he would have. Uh, what but he could. Weird conversation. He can do that to. William. Oh shit! And I take it William isn't answering because they're in the sewer, right? Yeah, they're gone. Like yeah. you don't know. William, where William is to... not answering the phone. William had to find his own way out. Um, this is crazy. What if something happens to him? Is that going to do something to you? I don't know how any of this works. 
and currently the only person who does isn't here she says yeah that's that's the thing about it um is that the city back there the people what was happening to them apparently that's all according to plan you see uh she's like he needs to be here gus needs to be here and explain it's according this. to gus's plan oh, god damn it and, she, and you see uh I don't know. I don't know. I'm starting to have I my mean, doubts about Gus. I don't. I mean, know. I, I don't know if we can trust them anymore. I don't. I I I don't uh, agree with what's happening back there, and I don't like. I don't trust Frank at all, but I don't trust Gus either. You see, Lucius speaks up. He's he normally he's just kind of sort of staring off into space after his run in with the House of Renunciation. And now he just kind of uh, chips in a little bit when he looks over to Alex and it's like, you don't trust Gus, but you want him here to explain what's happening? No, I don't. Not right now. And she's like, do we have a choice? Yeah, we, we do for at least a moment. We had, we'll have a conversation about this shit. We'll figure it out. We'll make a game plan. Somebody call Marsha, she says. She, Marsha's she attached to Gus. Then. Yes. We're, f we're flailing around asking uh, what, we, what other people can do for us. We need to figure out what we can do. And she's just drawing blanks. She's just kind of like, you know, sitting, uh, crouched okay. down uh, next to one of the, uh, uh, next to, in the front of the McDonald's. She's just like crouched down, like thinking, and like she's trying to hold back tears from everything that just happened uh, last 20 minutes or so. Sure. Um, <laughs> and Lucy's just going back to staring into nothing. According to Gus, all of that was according to plan. And the world ending is coming this very plan soon. This sucks, he says. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... Enter Damien uh, jogging gonna... from the woods. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should. <laughs> so, like an hour later, are you okay, Damien? How's <laughs> your blood pressure, like two buddy? Miles, so like maybe I don't know, fifteen minutes or so later. So I'm I'm, I'm there now. Yeah, it's, it doesn't take that long to just like jog down. The <sighs> I need to like take a rest. Later. I need to like I need a good fifteen minute to like. 20 minutes later he shows up he's sweating it's like <gasps> two or three glass of water and just like chill for 15 minutes does anybody want to get damien a glass of water are you okay you see alex says yeah i think i'm gonna be fine <laughs> i'll look through the back of the suv for any water bottles or anything that we can stash um i mean you have to drive quite a way yeah. so you probably have some snacks and stuff left over from the last time uh gus hit the uh the uh, gas station <laughs> uh, so yeah, you probably have some drinks or something back there. You can hand uh, Damien. You, uh, you sit there and just like ah, and just pour on your head, whatever. Yeah, like, oh, shit. hydrated. Uh, yeah. You you come in at the tail end of the conversation when somebody is like, uh, it, it, Alex is like, somebody get on the phone and call Marsha. We need to get a hold of Gus. Are you are mm -hmm. are you okay, Damien? Yeah, I'm gonna be fine. Thanks for asking. How many how many broken bones do we have? That's a good question. How many broken bones do I have, or do I have any broken bones? You feel like this definitely something popped and uh, broke. <laughs> you rolled on the highway. You're limping uh, partway through uh, before you started running out into the uh, into the wilderness. So yeah, you you definitely hurt yourself when you rolled out of the car like that. Oh, my, my hip took a pretty big hit, but I, I'm gonna be fine. <sighs> okay. Well. Like if there's an ice pack somewhere available, it's on my hip right now. Yeah, they they'll they sell ice. They sell bags of ice inside the uh, McDonald's. Somebody wants to go in and, and brave the uh, the line to, to get something. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll go there and be like, all right, well, we need. I think the first things first, we need to find a place to actually sit down and have so this conversation. It's me. It's me, Keem's redeemed posture check. What does that do? Oh, that means one of us has to sit up straight or something. Oh, I, <laughs> I think, think that's that, what that means. That might be me, maybe. <laughs> I was I was real Posture bad check. there for a minute. So. <laughs> Hydra hydration check. Yeah. Other uh, other um, other things that have happened in the donations, by the way. Uh, stolen fire has brought us a minor chaos. Yeah, we have to. And check that and out. and Mike's first roll will be an automatic crit success. 
Oh, Thank nice. You. Nice. Thank you, It's the Games, for checking our posture. Thank yes. you. Good success. Awesome. All right. So he's going to enter with a bang. Uh, all right. So uh, we'll do this hey, next yeah. part, Sean, as you're walking into McDonald's to order a bag of ice. And the, the, the there's like hardly anybody working here. It's strangely quiet inside the McDonald's. And when you walk to the front, uh, there's this one girl standing there with the headset on and like the uniform. And like they have their hair, like long dark hair falling all the way down from the little baseball cap with the McDonald's logo all the way down past them like this. Um, yeah, so I need a- I help you? <laughs> That's an interesting oh, okay. case. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, I need a bag of ice. Um, I need a double quarter pounder for myself. Um, maybe some McDoubles and some McChickens. Throw in about three of each. Uh, and then, uh, yeah. So if you can do all that, give me a large Coke, wrap it up. That'd be great. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. She pushes one button do you, on the, uh, the console. Do you need like a uh, uh, do you need like a halls or something? Like <laughs> no response. In the background, people like you see like movements in the background, like and shit like clattering to the floor and shit. And eventually, it's like uh, two, three chickens, three uh, and a bag of ice. Here you go. <laughs> like they, they put it on there. And she just like pushes them forward towards you. Thank you for coming to McDonald's. Have yeah. Um, yeah, you too. Um, just kind of look over and be like, <laughs> man, like... that voice is really rasp. All right. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you, Zach. Uh, am, am I supposed to offer help? Am I supposed to ignore it? I'm, I don't know. The, I'm hope that was polite. Okay, moving on. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to bring, bring out, out the, the stuff. Yeah, you, you have, in the meantime, you, the rest of you have some time to. We still need that minor call. chaos. Oh, the minor chaos. What was the From, minor chaos again? Uh, stolen fire. She hit us with one like twenty minutes ago, but I just mentioned it because I. Oh, is that the one where uh, the next roll gets a critical success? No, but minor minor chaos roll and a crit success was her. She bought both. Oh, oh, I so see. I we see. have a minor oh, table I, of chaos yes. roll. So that's gonna be a. It's a D fourteen for minor chaos. Let's see what that entails. <laughs> and such a weird die um, number. Five. Okay, so meteorological conditions change. Roll on the sub chart. Cool. <laughs> All right, you've rolled on this chart. Find a sub chart. Roll on that one. Yeah. Uh, ooh, 10 <laughs> maximum. Instant blizzard. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Damn it. Ouch. Damien, oh my Damien, God. do you remember how you were running through the woods and <laughs> fucking hot yeah. as balls? You don't want a bag of ice. With, yeah, you, you're like, I need some ice. <laughs> As he brings out the bag of ice, snow falling from the sky, and you're just like, that that isn't real. Do they have a snow machine around here? All right, like, so who did that? Because I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> All the natural phenomena is resulting in some really weird shit that's happening in this area. Mm. Instant, and, the, and then the wind starts kicking up and it, the snow starts flying into your face and you're just like oh, oh, this isn't good you see, you hear a car screeching down the street like Arr! and when you look like somebody like hit their brakes and just slammed into the lamppost up ahead oh man, this is crazy all right, all right into the oh. into the McDonald's Let's uh... into, into the McDonald's good plan, okay <laughs> So you you uh, you see what's happening outside? Like the the wind is starting to kick up, and signs are getting knocked over. People in the drive thru are like looking out their windows, like what the fuck is going on? The clouds are swirling overhead. It's starting to get really really cold. You see the the um, air sort of come out of your mouth. It's it's going to be uh, visible, and you're like oh, this isn't good at all. And you start like filing in as quickly as you can into the McDonald's right before the real heavy snow starts hitting uh, the area. It's a snowstorm, out of the blue, a blizzard. They're saying uh, on the uh, on the news as it's like cutting in and out. Uh, and where are we in the country? 
you're you're in the er very rural area of yeah new england and new hampshire specifically which is like a lot of small towns and okay you know. i mean I'm, I'm just making sure because there's no easter some parts of the country have never seen snow <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they're used to that sort of not not sudden like this, but yeah, you see like people are like, "What in the world is going on outside?" And uh, on the TV, all you see is like uh, shoddy foot aerial footage or ground footage of like helicopters like flying over Belmont and shit. And they're talking about, "Oh, it might be." I think it's like a gas leak, like something happened over there. Yeah. Okay. Um, you fall into the McDonald's and people like what well, people are there like getting in their cars and they're taking off like slowly down the street. Like looking at the accident and stuff. Um, <laughs> the one McDonald's girl is just standing there, stock still, hair hanging over their their face. Um, you're clustered together in one of the corners, and you you uh, you get the food brought out to you. Um, your phone starts to ring, Sean. It's Marsha. Mm. You you pick up and she's like, hey, it's kind of cutting in and out, but she's like, can you hear me? Can you can you read me? Uh, yeah, kind of ish. Stay still. Gus, Gus is on the way. Mm. <laughs> Eventually, you see uh, several hours go by. The weather outside gets worse. The snow starts piling up. Yeah, until so eventually, you see okay. somebody exit the the bathroom uh, that you didn't, or like a maintenance closet. Uh, that you didn't see was in there before. Two pe uh, three people emerge. Marsha opens the door and two people step through. One of them is Gus, and the other one's someone else you don't recognize. You've never seen him before. Uh, but go ahead and describe your your character, Mike, as he's uh, entering the the McDonald's through the maintenance door. Uh, Jace is a scruffy guy, probably in his mid thirties. He's got he's got a beard, but it's really unkempt. Uh, his hair, he he's probably never. He's washed it, but he probably has never combed it or brushed it or anything like that. So it just has weird angles. He's like, he looks like he just woke up. But, but the thing is, he looks like he hasn't slept in ages. He's got dark bags under his eyes. And um, uh, he's got a, a an irritating smirk, I guess you could say. It's like you, you, the smirk you want to punch out somebody's face. That kind of smirk. Punchable face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see Gus step through and he's like, characteristically smoking his cigarette, you know, indoors, of course. He doesn't care. Uh, he leads you, uh, uh, JC, and he leads you up to the, the corner of the uh, the McDonald's where these this huddled group of, uh, of such a really eclectic group of uh, individuals are sitting down having a lunch, and they st some of them are like, their hands are shaking and they don't know what's going on with them. Uh, I'm going to say is an older, uh, portly guy. Uh, the guy from who drove his car, uh, who you know, drove you Sean to this place. Uh, he's still with you. He's just kind of looking around cautiously. You don't know who he is. Um, but he's just kind of like along for the ride for right now. Uh, obviously the, with the blizzard outside, he, he's really, concerned about what's going to happen next and he doesn't dare drive in that weather so he's just kind of sitting it out as it were for right now uh what are you doing as as you see gus and marcia and uh, this third person come up uh, do any of you say or do anything as, as gus approaches i'm half expecting somebody to come up and try to punch him in the face or something <laughs> hi gus we got hired help you can say that and he says <laughs> yeah, somebody who's um, like sweeping nearby excuse me sir there's no smoking and he's just kind of like mm -hmm. he just kind of um, like yeah so him, keeps on what, smoking. What, what, the, what the fuck happened Gus what was that let's have us talk shall we he motions to the chairs he's like um Jace go ahead and introduce yourself I'll uh Marsha thank you for your help as always. oh hey Gus like, yeah. thank you for gracing the, us with your presence <laughs> These but are the is, uh, these are the people we talked about, Gus. Really? These are the people. Who's that? Ooh, they need coffee. I need I need coffee. You guys want coffee? Coffee, <laughs> coffee, coffee. Who, you have a coke. Who, who you are you? Drink coffee. It's too coke cold for coke. Yeah. Co co coffee. Who are you? I'm sorry. I'm Jace. Um, I'm, I'm here to help, according to Gus. But let me get you guys some coffee. I'm right back because I really I'm going to need to be caffeine to deal with these people. Oh, <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, you go to speak to the counter and order from the uh, the long haired girl. Um, he's wearing a dirty black t shirt and jeans that probably haven't been washed in I mean, four or five months. Look really unkempt. He's wearing cowboy boots, though. Gus? Who's that? He's a helper. Okay. More important question. What is he? Is He's he one a, of me? Is he one of Sean's? More like him. He points to Sean. All right. He should be helpful. He's been helpful in the past. Um, Can he patch me up? He shrugs. I don't know. Probably not. <clears throat> I mean, I think we're getting off the topic here. What the fuck happened, Gus? Yeah. Uh, why don't you tell me? He says. Take a drag from the cigarette. In the town? Like, what, what the hell was that? I don't know. I wasn't there. You were, though. Which town? He looks over at the TV in the corner and it shows like aerial footage of Belmont, you know, like from way from a distance, like there's smoke coming from it and shit. All I know is Lucius and I were in our rooms and then next thing I know, there's National Guard shooting at civilians who seem to be crazily attacking them, like just running straight into the gunfire. We got the hell out of there. And Apparently. I'm glad that you survived it, whatever that was. Yeah, just for, for Mike's uh, uh, information, the Gus looks like somebody's grandfather who's like in his 70s or 80s. Uh, you know from your time with him that the older he looks, uh, or he tends to look, the closer the world is to ending. And uh, he's told you as much. Or That's why I had the much. coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's wearing like a windbreaker and like slacks or whatever so he look he looks like and this is the best description i've heard of hit of him which seems apt given your own description but he looks like he is wearing uh the the few the a suit that he wore to a funeral like 30 years ago and he's still wearing it <laughs> so that's what he looks like and he's always smoking to change filter um he's he's like well i don't know what happened there all i know is that my crazy shit uh, all uh, flags that have been going off the moment it happened. So maybe you can fill me in instead. And he looks to Sean and the rest of you. And Alex is like, you should have been here! He's like, we don't, we don't know what the fuck is going on here, Gus. We need your help. And you just left us to whatever the fuck happened back there. He talked to his dad. He, he, apparently Sean had a talk with Frank Gordon what what's happening what did he do what kind of power does this guy possess and he looks to sean and he's like you spoke to frank yeah he possessed will as far as i possessed can tell him. that's new it's got to be because of the proxy that he's able to do that if he could do that with him though yeah he kind of looks at you, Sean, he's like, we need to be very careful moving forward. Because if you can do that with him, you can probably do it with you. No, yeah, my theory is if he could have done it with me, he would, have, he would be sitting here right now. So maybe you can't trust me. Wait, wait, I heard careful. Except that I tray of coffee and a whole bunch of creamers and sugars just dumped in a pile in the middle. <laughs> Yeah, apparently we have a problem with um, this Frank Gordon situation that I explained to you about earlier. Oh, oh, that's that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Mm. He's able to possess people that are in within his proxy. Like obviously, the people that are, have the strongest ties to him, with blood or otherwise, those are the people that he's going to have the closest, the more most control over. So of course, that's... motion motion to Sean. Of course, that makes complete sense. Yes, I can see. Yeah. And, and yeah. where is William now? He's dead. Look over at Sean. Are you being sarcastic? <laughs> he look. He uh, he looks to you, Sean. He's asking. He's like, "Where's William?" Uh, we got separated. I'm not sure. 
If you see him again, shoot him first and ask questions later. And as far as like whether or not we can trust you, Sean, and he asks you like a like a really personal question, like uh, only that something only you would know, only you and he would know, because he apparently knows all about you. And he's like, um, you know, he asks you like the your first date with your now deceased wife. What was your first date with uh, Lily? If you must know, um, my first date with Lily was uh, is argumentative. It's up for debate. If you ask her, we we met at a at, we we met at a mall. If you ask me, we had at a frat we we uh, met at a frat party I was attending that night. Yeah, great grounds Sorry. for a relationship. He looks at you thoughtfully uh, when you say that. You don't. You didn't see this before expressed by him, but he looks at you thoughtfully for a moment. He nods, and he's like, I'm sorry to bring it up. Had to be sure. Yeah, I'll murder I... the person who did that. <laughs> and he's like, fine. I, you know, he's your father. You do what you want with him. He looks over to uh, uh, Alex. He's like, I need your help. Oh, is it, you need my help now? Specifically? It's like, yes. I think I figured out what you are. It's like, I'm. Is it? Are you gonna clue me in? So you you're your channel. The <laughs> she shoots you this sharp look, like, shut the fuck up, uh, uh, Alex. You're some sort of a channel to the clergy. You're like a. So I'm sorry to say this, but well, you're you're a phone. I'm sorry, Alex. Uh, the universe made you into a living phone receptacle to the invisible clergy. And you appear to be an open channel to them, which I've never seen before. Not sure what that entails, but I need to use that connection to speak with them. I'm sure they're going to want to be interested in what I have to tell them. You see, she's like, and then, which is what exactly? Yeah, phone you use it to communicate with. You should know that by now. No. She's like, that's not what I meant. She says sharply, and she's like, "What is it that you Definitely intend to tell them?" Definitely phone. <laughs> Old school phone, right? <laughs> Analog. Uh, <laughs> you see, he's like, um, he gets a chuckle out of that a little bit, and he's like, hmm. uh, "What she meant was, what is it that I'm trying to tell them?" And if what I suspect, Frank Gordon, I'm assuming you explain what happened to to some degree damien and or sean okay yeah i leave out the part where i i just like i had a conversation and uh frank said this was all according to plan um and i conveniently leave out the fact he asked me to betray gus that's fine that's fine that 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 hasn't compromised your taboo yet um and you see, he's like, well, uh, if that's what's going on, then I think I understand what Frank's plan is. I think he's trying to put an end to the world by bringing the world to its knees. He kind of goes into some sort of an explanation. He's like, the only reason the clergy exists is because people exist. Enough people have an idea about what constitutes an archetype one of those people within the social consciousness is chosen or they inadvertently channel an avatar and he looks over to uh, uh, Jace and he's like um, well, what I think Frank wants to do is he wants a culling he wants to bring the world to its knees weeded, uh, weeded out of a, a large majority of the people to bring the clergy on the control. That's really the only way to do it. Because if the if the archetypes continue to ascend 
and the clergy becomes full, all 333 archetypes are filled, then the world ends, and we, been, we begin the cycle anew. If his intent is to stop the cycle, that is one way he can do it. Oh, wow. And if New Hampshire is any indication, then he's planning on doing, um, he's probably planning on doing this on a much larger scale. This is just a test run. So I need to make contact with the clergy and tell them what the fuck is happening. Because this changes the game considerably. And usually I meet with the clergy once a year, or once every couple of years. But this is a bit of an emergency, to say the least. So I need to get on the hotline, so to speak, and relay the information to them so we can make plans of our own. And he sees, like, I don't know how to dial the clergy. How the fuck are you intending to do that? He's like, I have a, I have an idea. Find me all the phones that you can get inside of this place while that's going on out there. He's, he says, and he points to the blizzard going on outside. I need to make a phone call. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you see, he just kind of like points to the center of the table, like all the phones. Chase pulls out his flip phone. <laughs> that's the center of the table. I give him my phone. Okay. Jesse uh, pulls out about 28 communication devices from his backpack. <laughs> Perfect. Interpreting all of the radios as uh, meeting his definition as well. So, like, even if it's not, like, a true phone, anything that could make a call, I pull out. Excellent. I don't remember asking this. Do you have a radio shack in there, by the way? Pretty much. <laughs> it seems like it. <laughs> You see as the blizzard is starting to roll in unnaturally outside, uh, you see the uh, the guy who is sweeping the floor is just kind of like aghast at what's going on, but then he sees, inevitably sees the, the majority of you like standing up, putting your phones on the table, and he's like, I need more phones, and he goes and he points to like the uh, the the behind the counter where the, the girl with the long hair is, there's like an old, excuse me, an old uh, phone, not a rotary phone, but the one that you have to push the buttons, like you said, uh, Mike. Uh, there's Touch one of those, phone. like, attached to the wall. Yeah. Push button phones and all manner of different uh, line phones available. <laughs> who 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 will brave that uh, encounter? Uh, with I'll, the, I'll uh, go do it. That's fine. Staff at the McDonald's. Okay. I got this. He I got says, this. How can I help you? Hey, beautiful. Can I get that phone on the wall? She just gestures towards the phone. You don't know if uh, if it's like a confirmation or not. And you see like somebody behind the lines, like they they want to do a what? <laughs> I walk around. I just left the phone off the wall. Uh, excuse me, sir. It's somebody from like down away. That's only for uh, uh, business use only. Yeah, I'm calling the head office. Oh shit! <laughs> you see somebody say that like in subdued manner, and they duck out of sight. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hide the drugs. <laughs> we have drugs? Do you, <laughs> do you pull the phone off the wall and take it to the table? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, there's just gonna, you get a lot of looks like, uh, are we, what are we going to do about that truck? Um, you bring the phone. Ain't nobody calling there. the blizzard. I said, you guys will be fine. He's like, he takes the, the cord, he disassembles it, and he starts wrapping, um, uh, Alex's arm with it, and she's just like, "Do I really want to ask why you're doing that?" And he, he just his cigarette's still in his mouth. He's just like, "No, brain tourniquet. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's fine." <laughs> you see, like that, he gets like a, some other wires and stuff like that that belong to the phone. He just like creates this weird uh, mishmash, crisscross wiring uh, around Alex and sits her in the middle of the room, like in a chair, and he asks the rest of you to back up. Uh, he, starts, yeah. uh, he starts taking like a pen and starts drawing things on napkins and uh, he uses like um, the leftovers of your food as like uh, um, uh, paperweights to hold them down in place like make sure these things don't move. He's drawing like weird sigils but he's also writing the word Hermes and all this other stuff like and it's just really weird random assortment of stuff and he's like I need I to kill all the group. fights. Like, this is why I took this job, just to watch this kind of stuff. Because really, this is the best ever. I don't know if you guys ever <laughs> watched this directly, but this is amazing to me. Magic from nothing. 
You see everybody kind of yeah, yeah, This is magic from work weird crap. Just... Yeah, yeah, it's it's great. Yeah, well, I love this. When you, when, Whole when entire you say experience has been nowhere. amazing. When you say when you say magic from nowhere, you see Lucius who's just kind of staring off into the corner. He's like, "Don't, don't, don't talk about the nowhere." He says, and he goes back to staring at the corner. <laughs> um, and you see, uh, or nothing rather. He's just like, "Don't talk about the nothing." Eventually, you see uh, Gus sets up the the scene. He's like, "I need you to kill all the lights in here." <laughs> you see, uh, the the oh. guy who's sweeping the floor. Like, oh, sorry, folks, but you're gonna have to clean up in here. Oh, we can't have you doing that. Hey, aren't you doing for a break? Just, just don't. <laughs> just don't. Uh, you can roll me a connect uh, or something uh, equivalent of like uh, charm or. Intimidate if any of you have that, you can roll it to try to get these people off your back. Otherwise, they're going to try to, like, no, no, we can't hey, stop Damien. operations. You know, it's important in the middle yeah. of the blizzard. <laughs> what do you think the chances are that the blizzard's going to knock out the power cable to this place? Give me a minute. <laughs> nice. And Damien's going to focus on it real hard. And in his mind, he imagines, like, wind gusts, really strong wind gusts, fucking yep. up. The, it's already uh, happening. Yeah. Power power lines outside. Nice. Now, how much yeah. is death going to cost me charge wise? Um, not really that much. I mean, things are already swinging in that direction anyway. So if you want to spend like a minor charge and make a roll, that's fine. All right. So a minor charge has been spent, and we are now going. You just need one small straw to break that camel's back, so to speak. 31 yeah, there it is. on 60. Got it. Perfect. Yeah. You hear like working on it and like you see like he looks outside for a second you hear like a psh, 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 and like one of the poles just goes halfway down to the floor and all the lights just die. Psh. You see as the guy's like oh, I'm sorry you guys have to clean it. All, all the lights die and he's just like oh no oh no no that's not good. I gotta get the backup generator going. He says he starts running towards the back drops his broom. Why do we hear him say that? Yeah, he yell well, he's yelling that to like his other people. The one girl, of course, is just standing stock. No, oh, no, we need no power for the moment. No light. Someone do something. I can't move. Oh, someone do something. Okay, Ooh. I will. <laughs> what are you doing, Sean? I'm just gonna go to hey. the back. Follow him. Follow him out the back and be like, and just be like, um, we're gonna need five minutes. <laughs> you tell him that, and it's like, I need five minutes in the room. Or no, I need I need you not to turn on the generator for five minutes. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, but do you I want a problem? Uh, oh. Now you now you need to roll connect and or intimidate whichever is. Uh, I I rolled a fourteen out of forty five. Oh. Well then, okay, yeah, he's just like I need to I need the room. However you wanted to come across, if you want to like, hey, I really need a favor. If you could just give me like five minutes of no lights on good see uh, this guy i the fucker i will end you <laughs> th this guy jay's out there he looks like he has a really punchable face and right now i'm envisioning his face where your face is i just so like, I need five minutes uh, okay he just kind of saunters off and hey there's a guy over here he's scary you know like that uh you're standing by the door arms crossed eventually you see uh Gus, you know, finishes the, the beginning portions of the ritual. And now that the lights are completely off, uh, all the, the phones, all the phones are turned off. Like there's no power going to them or anything like that. They all start ringing simultaneously. He says, don't touch any of them. And he's like, they all start like, and like, uh, you see, even the, the, the phone that's disconnected starts ringing, starts making that, it's like a distorted ringing sound, like a, almost like a distant, like, and then it kind of fades away like that. And uh, all your unnatural meters are just like, woo, going off. So anybody who doesn't have unnatural four, three or higher, go ahead and roll it now. Uh oh. Shit's about to hit the fan a little bit here in a minute. It's a giant yeah, cacophony of bones ringing. Un um, okay, unnatural on my four, so I'm good. Did you make it? No. 
Oh shit. So you get to decide how your character uh, reacts to this. Like you've seen some weird shit. Weird shit, but, but this, this is a bit much. I pull my hip flask out and immediately drink half of it. <laughs> You're like watching. Like, sit down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is great. This is, anyone want some? <laughs> I hand it to Damien. <laughs> you might need this. Yeah. You see, eventually he uh, he stops. What it's like the, the fourth stop, flask uh... in this group, though. We we all have a flask <laughs> yes. at this point. Oh well, good. it's kind of required. <laughs> He Fantastic. eventually picks up one of the phones, the one that's that the the push button phone that's not connected. He pulls up one of the phones and he puts it to his ear, and it you all the phones then shut off. They stop ringing, and then you hear like a multitude of voices like in the room with you at the same time, like they're all speaking at the same time, and you hear a name uh, like this weird. Uh, they say something in another language or something uh, from what you can understand and it, it almost sounds like a name but you're not sure and he's like yes it's me uh sean you hear this uh do you make a note of it yeah i make a note of it what is it right uh, yes what do it, okay i don't understand the language yeah, it, but I'm it, definitely it, paying the attention. First half, the first half you don't understand. Um, one second. I'm going to find you the oldest name here. Uh, ah, here it is. This is the name that you hear being uh, said aloud by this multitude of voices. I'm going to send it to you right now. It's like a son. You called. It's like a million voices talking at once. What it sounds like, and he's just speaking into the receiver very calmly. You know, we need to talk now. We need to have a meeting. It's an emergency. And he's like, they're like, hmm. Very well. We'll meet at the usual place, the Bonton. Miami. You see the voices just whoosh. they all sort of recede. You see like there's almost like a wind that that's like whipping through the, the McDonald's in the dark right now. Uh, and then after the they say that like it stops and um the, the phones like stop ringing and everything like the cacophony ends and he just like tosses the, the empty receiver on the floor and he's like okay you can have the lights on now he says Conversation's over. I know where, what we need to do. Where, yeah, where we need to go, rather. Yep, yep. You're definitely going somewhere. I flip Woo. on the switch for the man and just walk by walk by him. I'll look over and be like, yeah. I... Thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> you see the one guy's like peeking through the door, like making sh waiting for <laughs> you to leave before they go in and like... Just give him a wink as I pass the, by. Emergency. <laughs> they hit the emergency unit and the lights start to flicker back on like... <laughs> Uh, half working efficiency. You see a lot of you hear the computers and things like that, like booting up in the background. Um, you're stuck in this blizzard, though. And you see Gus is like, "Well, that's not going to do." He says, looking at the <laughs> the weather outside, and he's like, um, uh, "He's like, I'm, he's like, uh, Marsha had to run. I can't can't use her right now." And he's like, um, "Let me go ahead and uh, we need to pack up, and start heading south southeast uh, specifically. We're going to Miami." Uh, let's see. Yeah, here like, it's great this time of this year. Place. I'm in. <laughs> He's like, well, it's gonna be definitely warmer than this shithole. He says, looking around at the, the blizzard outside, it's like, where the hell did this even come from? What does Gus do with uh the the phone device when he's done with it? He leaves it on the floor. He doesn't care. Oh. Uh, he's like, you can have your phones back now. I'll start passing phones back. The phones don't work great <laughs> again. <laughs> like when you turn them back on, you're just like, it's doing weird shit. Like it's resetting itself multiple times. And it's just like, are these phones? I don't think these phones are going to be the same ever again, but there you go. I'm going to keep uh, the rest of the mess that came out of my bag, like connected though. Oh, I, one, I one small, 
put some more detail. Alex, the whole time, like the moment the ritual started, like her eyes rolled back into the back of her head and she was completely out for the whole thing. Like she was just mm -hmm. like in weird mode. And then afterwards she went back and it's like, so when are we doing this? Are we doing this now? And Gus like, it already happened, sweetheart. We're done. She's like, she completely missed the boat. She has no idea what the hell just happened. Apparently we're going to Florida. You got you got uh, swim trunks. You got uh, <laughs> swimwear you want to pack up. Uh, some lotion as well. Oh, I'm pretty sure we're gonna need uh, some towels. She's like, um, he, he's just like Gus. What the? What? What are we doing? What's happening? And she's he's like, I'll tell you on the way. He says, and he's like, No, you're gonna tell me now. And she's just kind of like, Okay. <laughs> and he's like, Well, why don't you uh, boys pack up? And looks over to the the van and the, the little small little car outside. He looks at the portly guy whose car you came in, Sean. And he's like, "I'm sorry, you have to get dragged hey. into this. Uh, you're gonna be okay." And he's like, <laughs> "Yes." He shakes his head. Uh, oh, you'll be fine. Um, I take a coffee the... and hand it to the portly driver and pour some of my flask in it for him. <laughs> there you go. You'll be okay. Trust me. He's like. <laughs> uh, he looks to the van outside and he's like, will you uh, pack things up? Uh, Jace, why don't you give him a hand? Help, help him pack up and get ready. I'll follow behind. And um, and he looks over to the, the guy whose hand is shaking as he's drinking the vodka coffee. He's like, Pedro? I'm going to drive with Pedro on the back. Como estamos, Pedro? Bien. Bien, gracias. Uh, and he pulls uh, Alex aside and starts like having like a one-on-one -on -one with her. Uh, the rest of you are free to do whatever you want. Uh, you're free to your devices. How you no, don't do that. prepare? You all seem rather not high strung about this, which is great. Is Alex always this <laughs> high strung about this kind of stuff? She needs yeah. to calm down. It's, She's gonna hurt herself. Um, look, I'm gonna be honest. We've been doing this for about a week now. Hmm. Oh, Ori like orientation okay. was a bitch. Yeah. Yeah, it usually is. You're right. You know. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, cops with guns. Oh, guns. That's always a good starter. Yeah. 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 Magical, magical tethers attached to you. Um, apparently, co the cops can find you wherever the fuck you want, wherever the fuck we are. So we're doing great. Yeah, the way Gus made it said you guys are doing okay. It's, it's, it's not, you know, I've heard of, I heard worse starts. So, you know, you, you guys are hanging in there, which is good to see. So, you know, give yourself God, a thumbs up. God, I know? was... I was being fucking sarcastic. Holy shit. You've seen worse? <laughs> Jesus Christ. There's something fucking wrong with orientation. Well, it's not really scripted anymore. It's just hard to script things like that. You know, and, and the worst things get, uh, the, the older Gus gets, and so it's hard for him to manage certain things, and then I get called in, and then I just, like, um... I oh, so you're part of the rigmarole with Gus there? How uh, many worlds have you seen end? I'd rather not discuss that. Let's just and say that. and how many and how many how many of the world's end look like? Any points of the fucking news? Uh, people being possessed and killing each other and killing themselves and just doing and ripping out their own intestines. How many? Do you, do you want to laugh or do you want to know the truth? I want to know the truth. Oh man, you're the worst audience ever. <laughs> uh, no, no. Well, it, look, uh, it's it, it's always bad. This is pretty bad as things go. I'll, I'll, I'll give Gus that one, uh, as far as I've seen. But and then I'm allowed to remember. But um, no, you guys do a good job. So give yourself a pat on the back. I mean, you're all here. No one's severely injured. Um, Looks over, Damien. <laughs> Damien, you probably should get that looked at somehow. Uh, we'll find you a doctor in Miami. I may know a guy. I I may know. I just need to charge up a little. I'll be able to fix it myself. Well, you know, that's we, actually what Damien's gonna want to do. Is gonna he's gonna want to start charging up. Uh, you mm. might have just dislocated it. We can we can probably pop it back in the slot. I just need. Oh, you want to help? How much do you have on you? How much what do I have on me? <laughs> Money? Yeah. I'll take it as Money. not a lot. <laughs> Money. Money. I haven't actually actually had to, I haven't earned a damn dime in ages. Um, I was okay. that show in, in Lincoln. Ooh, um, that was... A hand Jace a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> Here you go. Thank you. No, Jace. All right. No, I hand it to Jace. Oh! He's going to want you to make a bet yeah. for something, I think. Oh, oh, we're, we're betting. I like betting. 
Actually, I no, I would have taken that oh, money. Oh, you want, you want the money? Like, okay, then fine, I'll, I'll pass the money. I thought you were going for a bet. Thanks. Uh, you can so, bet me anytime. I'm happy to, to, to place bets. I'm, I'm good at that. Really with that one hundred dollar bill, I'm gonna find the, the the like sleaziest, cheesiest bar I can find with slot machines, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna burn the entire hundred because I have to like sacrifice something that would like be like, ah, oh, damn, I lost it, and that hundred dollar bill is the only money I have left right now from Jesse, so I need to charge up. Whether I win or lose, I don't know how you want to play it. How many char charges can I pull out of one set of like spending, burning the entire? hundred dollar bill well usually it, it it relies on risk so like what yeah. is it that you're risking exactly is it like a personal item of yours is it like <laughs> just losing the entire hundred bucks would piss me off because i have nothing be left that'd be a minor charge or something like one that. charge yeah okay instead at the bar what i'm going to try to do is is there i'm trying to look for the biggest baddest guy in the bar are you all going with him while he's doing this, or is this like? Oh, a I want to see this. So yeah, I'm going with okay. him. <laughs> yeah, I'm going with him. Is it? Also, I can't find a big bad guy. I'll find him for him. Is it? Is it just Sean at this point? Sean and uh, and, that would uh, be James funny. With, uh, Damien in the bar. Okay, so the bar. There's actually a bar like in the same, um, in the same plaza as the McDonald's. It's like a billiards, you know. You and your, you and your, the billiard bars. Uh, Damien. but yeah you go over there and like you have to go trudging through like the snow that's like coming down like whipping at you like oh uh you get in there and like um they they're quick to like close the door like it, it takes two guys it's just like oh and he, uh they have to like sweep the floors and shovel the snow off the the front door to get you in it's starting to pile oh, up quickly and you see uh everybody's just kind of spooked and watching the news uh, at the bar and like you know the the lights are dimming in and out and like the the cable and everything's like pixelating on the screen and stuff like that like obviously the blizzard is in full swing right now um but you managed to get in and uh, they're like what do you have um uh, give me tequila all right whiskeys are half off he says oh dan whiskey whiskey's good <laughs> So you line two, up some two, please. <laughs> a double for this guy. Okay. You pay your your tab and what? How exactly are you risking uh, your hundred dollars? So I'm looking for the baddest guy I can, the biggest guy I can find here. Okay. He's currently sitting down, just like shoveling drinks. <laughs> uh, I I sit next back. to him, and as I sit next to him, I'm looking for another big guy. All right. That would be at the bar. All big right. Marine-looking guy. So I sit next to the guy that's chugging all those drinks, and I'm like, man, I wouldn't want to be you right now. Excuse me? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, my name's Eric. <laughs> and uh, you see that guy at the bar over there? Yeah. I just called you a pussy. But you know he what? So you like, really? Like, really? Yeah, 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 really. You know what, though? I, I take the money out and I put it in front of him and I go, my bet's on you, though. Mm, nice. Okay. This is That's yours more. if you can take him out. <laughs> That's worth a lot more now. Okay, so roll for me the uh, your uh, con man identity. I forget what it's called exactly. Yep. And here we go. One thing that you definitely excel at. Oh, 64. Oh. Out of Please. 60. But oh. let's see here. I'm going to reroll it if I can reroll because I got rerolls left. Sure. I want this to work. Um, come on, come on, come on. There yes, 24. All right. So you, you, you hand him the. The, you, you put the hundred dollars on the table. It's like my money's on you that you can shut yep. that guy the, shut the fuck up. And he's just like, he looks at him and he sees like the guy look over his shoulder because obviously like he sees like in the in the mirror of the bar like you're you're pointing at him at the bar and he's like, what is this guy talking to me? And he's like, what? Well, oh, he gets up and he sucks at him over there. Call me a pussy motherfucker. And he's like starts like, weighing into like ah ah what the oh, what the fuck? And he like grabs a bar stool and he starts getting into it and failure okay that's cool 
So he does. <laughs> so I roll a match failure. That's all. That's the the second tier down from the the worst thing you can possibly roll in the game, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so what happens is he takes a swing at this guy and he moves out of the way just in time. He sucker punches the guy right next to him. You want to know what happens next? Oh yeah. <laughs> Sean is at the bar. He's currently ordering another whiskey, just in case. <laughs> and right now, you're on your third whiskey, Sean, and you see like a flurry of activity on further down the bar as like three people, no, four people are getting into a fist fight. And if I can sense the chaos, the energy like building up, my, what I do like to, to, to give a representation of how I'm sucking up all those charges, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm bree breathing it in like if it was air. I'm like, I see chaos <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh yummy, yeah. <laughs> You see the one guy like bust bust a bottle over the one guy's head and then like stabs him in his head. Like this is escalating quickly. All of a no, sudden, this is good stuff. And a guy throws him onto the table, and the other guy like they end up like getting into a, like a wrestling punching fight and like on the floor of the the bar. You see the bar just like, what the fuck? Hey, 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 cut that shit out! Come on! And like you see a bunch of people like rush over to try to break it up. And the one guy who got like slashed by the the bottle is just like, I'm fucking bleeding, and he's like. Also bleeding from Who, his mouth, by the way. <laughs> how many people are trying to stop? Is it just one, one person? No, because there's like four people now engaged in the like melee in the middle of the bars. So you see the bartender, right. like some of the bar backs are coming in, like, hey, 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 break that, break that shit up, break that shit up. You Sean, get four minor charges from that. Sean oh, nice. taps the guy next to him. He's like, hey, what's who's your money on? <laughs> one for each of the people that got affected. Uh, sorry, what were you saying, uh, John? Uh, Sean taps the guy next to him and just says, hey, uh, who's your money on? Uh, he's just kind of like, oh, that big fucker over there. He points to like the uh, the Marine who's sitting at the bar who ducked the shot initially and then like jabbed the other guy back in response successfully. Mm. You guys losing, uh, Damien? I think you might be losing the $100. I mean, I'll, t I'll take that action. Puts 50 on the table. <laughs> So make it uh so you i'm gonna say that the the big marine guy in the on the bar like sucker punch your guy and like won the fight or whatever so <laughs> your guy gets dragged away he's bleeding and shit ah uh, well shit there. cheers me <laughs> while this is going on how lucky am i to the guy that damien coerced to go away and fight the guy left his car keys on the table <laughs> go ahead and roll while you're i'll use my critical success for that Ah, perfect. Yeah, you see, the guy got so incensed that he, he's like, hold on a minute. He's like taking stuff out of his pockets, like putting his shades down. So he, he left the keys to his uh, SUV. Uh, I outside. take his keys, his wallet, his sunglasses, his trucker hat. Whatever he's left here, it's now mine. And uh, <laughs> shall we go? Nice. As you all uh, start to exit the, the bar, um, you see these guys are starting to pull up in the van and everything uh, with uh, uh, Gus in tow in Pedro's little putt-putt car. And you see uh, Jace come out and he goes right past the van and everybody else and you're like, everybody's like, what the, hell, what the hell is he going? And you're like looking around to see who, which car is his and underneath the blanket of snow, there's like a chirp. <laughs> so you walk right, you stomp over, get in and you just start Starting it up, you see the windshield wipers come on automatically, like wiping the snow off the, the windshield. You're like, yeah, I just nice got car. myself a new car. <laughs> you took the keys, but you couldn't get me a flask refill. What the fuck? <laughs> the the blizzard is Yours affecting refill the refill itself. Oh yeah, good call, right? Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> God damn it! But I'm gonna have to take your flask. All right, cool. And uh, with that, you see the uh, it's a, about a 1,500 mile drive to Miami from where you are in New Hampshire. But the, the blizzard is only affecting the immediate area. So you have to maybe drive maybe 10 miles and you're outside the, the vector of the of the initial blizzard. It's just affecting that area specifically. Uh, it's starting to grow in size, but it just started with like within the last hour. So you have time to like get out of town and start heading down south to southeast rather to, to Miami, to the Bonton and the meeting with the clergy, uh, the invisible clergy. 
that's a pretty good place to stop for right now. We're going to take a break for about 10 minutes. We'll be okay. back. Uh, so looking at it, it's like a 5.40 uh, Eastern time. We'll be back at 5.40 Eastern time, everybody. Welcome to be gone.
Welcome back, everybody. Uh, our group was just heading back, uh, or we just broke up a bit of a, or started a bit of a bar fight and in the middle of a blizzard in New Jersey, excuse me, New Jersey, in New Hampshire, and are now exiting and heading towards Miami to meet with the invisible clergy in person. Should be fun. Um, we're... Oh, how bad a shape is Damien right now? How, how does he feel? You feel pretty good. Uh, I mean, before you were kind of drained, you were low on charges. Uh, I gave you, did I give you four? You gave me four, yeah. Okay, I'll give you five because you lost a hundred bucks. But yeah, go ahead and give you, put, your, put down uh, five uh, uh, minor charges. All right, so I'm back to seven points. Because I had uh, two left. Ah, very good. So yeah, you, you're, you're pretty charged up now. You can do some stuff. But uh, physically, how do I feel like from throwing myself off guard? Well, as 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 much as you would imagine, like the, <laughs> your whole body is screaming, like uh, I need to rest, and you okay. know, like it's kind of like that same feeling you feel when like your whole body when you're sick, your whole body aches. It's kind of like that. Except okay, that but I'm not I'm not damaged to the point where I can't walk or can't. No, not, or... not not. Okay, 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 okay. Cool. You were limping for a little bit there, and you can, but you can, you can walk and run normally now. It's just like your body's hurting. All right. You're not got a big SUV. You can just take a nice long nap in the back. Oh. There you go. Yeah, you can put do, down the doing, seats in the back. You got three cars, so you can do what you, as you wish. You doing that. Down to Miami. Doing that. Uh, it's it's a better part of 24 hours that you're gonna be if you drive straight down. Cool. This is Bye. in the middle of the day thereabouts, like around uh, four or five o'clock. You, you leave New Hampshire and you start heading down. You get on 995. You take it all the way down. Uh, I'm assuming you stop for the when it starts to get dark. Uh, if you if that if the plan is to stop over and get rest before you continue in the, at the beginning of the day <clears> next day. I don't know how you want to plan that out. Gus is leaving it up to you. He's not, you know, telling you what to do. He can, that guy doesn't sleep at all, as far as you know, so. I mean, if people don't mind sleeping in the car, I wouldn't mind trading off the drive. But that's up to people. Yeah, we can do that. You want to do the trade off? Okay. So, that works. Um, right, that works. So, whoever ends up being the, the last leg, uh, the driver on the last leg is probably tired by the time you get there, and everybody else is mostly rested. Uh, or unless you can't sleep in the car, in which case, and then you're all kinds of tired. In that case. Can I, can I have a real quick conversation with Damien? Sure. You got plenty of time. On, on the way there, um, just kind of you know, like tap, tap Damien on the shoulder and be like, uh, yeah. what's up? Can you, don't really know how it works, that real space fuckery you do. Um... Can you get a locate on my son? I can definitely give it a try, but uh, I would need probably like a bigger charge for that. Like, I, 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 but but I can do it. I can do it. Okay. Once we get to Miami, I'll uh, I'll, I'll whip something up for you because like uh, yeah, we really do need to uh, well, get know what's happening. And I I want to specifically not be in the car with Gus. <laughs> or Jace while we're talking. Uh, Jace will be asleep while you're talking. That would be fair. It's, it's, uh, uh, but is he really uh, sleeping? Uh, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just keep it down just in case. Um, yeah. But I'll, I'll be like, hey, look, I'm going to... Don't worry about I have it. To, I have to trust someone here. And uh, I don't, I don't know what the fuck Gus is playing at. Let's be honest, let's be real here. We're we're all along for the fucking ride on this one. But uh, my jackass father um, said gave me a way out, gave me a, a way back to my boy, and. Uh, I don't know about this whole world ending bullshit or anything like that, but I don't, I don't, I really, really fucking hate being used. And I seem to be getting it from both ends of the stick right now. Um, I want to know where my boy's at and I want to kill the fucker that took him. 
and I'll help. And you. I'm uh, and I'm trusting you not to fucking like. I got you. Not, not I got to be. You. I don't fucking trust Gus as far as I can fucking throw him. And I don't well, know what this whole world remake bullshit is going to even look like in the end. Like, when we all return to fucking matter and, like, I, I don't fucking know. I want man. off of this fucking carousel. The world can go fuck itself as long as I have my boy. The thing is, is we, we don't have a choice in anything right now. I mean, whatever happens is, is going to happen. Yeah. Where's this taking place? Inside the car or is it like uh, off to the side of the road when you're stopping for gas or something like or food? Wherever we can just be be like me and Sean, I think, like right? Yeah. yeah. Oh Jesus, I just shut off my monitor. Yeah, I think I think Jesse's like <laughs> probably waiting in the car for them to get back. Oh good. That's perfect. Yeah. Uh yeah. roll percentile, Sean. Oh no. Okay. Hey, there's my monitor again. Like, it's probably going to be Jesse's leg to drive and those two are just chatting before just... the last swap over or something. Did you roll? Yeah. Thinking about, uh, yeah, I should probably use... Re this is a percentile, though. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. 68. 68. Okay. Uh, you failed. Uh, I rolled a seven, and I won. So okay. here's what happens. Uh, you, uh, is there something else that you wanted to say to Jesse other than what you already said? Or to say Damien? Oh, sorry, Damien. Yeah, like, my mission is to try and see you guys through this and to get my son back. What was that last bit you said? Like, the hell with the squirrel or something like that? Uh-oh. <laughs> the, the last bit I said, the, the world can go fuck itself as long as I have my kid back. There it is. You uh, you say that, and you go to turn around and inside uh, as you're leaving the Piggly Wiggly, and that's when your body starts going into convulsions. And all of a sudden, you, like, collapse, like, onto a shelf of, like, potato chip bags and snacks and stuff like that and they're falling all over the place some people look and they're like oh my god is he okay is he having a heart attack uh you see this happen right in front of you damien except okay. that you've seen this movie before and you know exactly how it ends you see after a moment he starts to move and he starts slowly getting back up again oh fuck no but he I get looks back. different he has a weird look in his eye I start, like, I, I start like a couple of steps back he's towards like, the exit. <laughs> oh, I remember you. He says, looking at you as he starts to get up. You're one of his pals, right? He says, Sean, you wake up in a room handcuffed to a bar, a metal bar that's bolted into the wall next to a large metal door with a little vanity slot and a mirror on the far wall. And just like just like William described to you, you look down and you don't recognize your hands or the clothes that you're wearing. You're in someone else's body. You're in oh, Frank Gordon's no. body. But he doesn't even have a flask. Fuck this guy. <laughs> you know, I was originally looking for the other one. William... But uh, he's all by him lonesome right now, dodging those uh, authority figures. It's very annoying. It's unlike you to split up like that and to leave one of your own behind. That's, uh, that's really disappointing. I was hoping you'd be all together again, he says. Mainly because I wanted to have another conversation with my son. It's a little hard to do that in the, under the circumstances. So maybe you can ask him. Because this is really, this is the really important part. He says, looking at you, Damien. I want the Compta's real name. Otherwise, I'm going to have his split slice his son's throat. All right. Are we, one minute, are we, one minute. Wait, are we 100% clear here? Whose real name do you want? 
You know who I'm talking about. Gus? Oh, That's Gus. That's not his real oh, fucking name. Fuck Gus. Yeah, fuck Gus. Gus is being exactly. really fucking weird right now. That's the smartest thing I've ever heard of any of you say so far. Mm. So why don't you get on the bandwagon? Get with the program. I need you to tell me what his real name is. <laughs> Trust that. me, if I knew, I would fucking tell you. No one knows his real name. Oh. Someone knows. Someone knows. And he trusts you. So, when you find out, I need to know. Can you tell our boy Sean here? Next time I get in contact with you, I need to I need to have that name. Will you make that happen? His son lives and this world ceases to end. We have a deal. Alright. I'll hold you to that. See you around. With that, you know. Sean's body goes limp. <laughs> you catch him just in time. Yeah. Uh everybody's like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> oh, he's having an episode. Don't worry about it. it happens a lot. I'm <laughs> just carrying him out. And Sean. as I go out, I'm like, guys, guys. <laughs> See, he's help. like convulsing a little bit. Gus oh, sees man. this and he's just kind of squinting his eyes. And he's just studying what's happening. You bring him out to the van or the SUV or whatever to go lay him down. And he still eventually starts to wake back up. Uh, you Is have Gus moments. There? Yeah. He's there. You have moments inside of Frank's body before you get, you know, ripped back into your own body. Sean, what do you want to do? Um, I want to check Frank's body. Like I want to see. I want to <laughs> see what he has on him. <laughs> well, you're handcuffed to to this bar, so you would have to bust free of that and then search his his. Uh, yeah, I don't know what his strength looks like, but it ain't my fucking body. <laughs> You can make a you can make a check. You can roll to see if you can break free. That's going to be a considerably difficult roll, but you can try to roll. I won't tell, uh, tell you what, if you succeed or not. What if what would the roll look like if I was willing to uh, bust my own hand? Not your hand. What the heck? Hmm. You'd probably. I mean, yeah, you could probably do that uh, pretty easily. Actually, go ahead and roll. I'll let you know. Uh, what should I roll? Percentile. Just a percentile? Okay. Yep. You're in somebody else's body now, so you don't know what their attributes are, what their systems, you don't know what their abilities are. You're cheating if I told you. Two. You rolled a two? Fuck you. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> wow. nice. All right, so you're just like, fuck you, dad. And you're like, you just like, how do, how do you describe, like, breaking his, uh, what do you want to do? Like, you want to break his hand? Like, at the wrist or something? Uh... I just take, uh, I take I, I take my hand and I put the thought my basically put my hand like this, and I put it on my other hand and I just crush it oh. underneath my body weight. Oh. Oh. You're like, huh, fuck you, dad. Oh. <laughs> like you hear this crunching sound and like uh, there's a commotion going on outside. The little vanity slot slides open. And you see, you see this guy with like an America First hat or whatever. He's just like, "Oh shit, he did it!" Oh, Frank's <laughs> really gonna fucking hate that. <laughs> he laughs. And the, slot, the slot goes back on, and then you get ripped right out of your body. You feel this intense pain, and then it's just gone, just like that. It melts away, and boom, you're back in your body, and you're just like, <gasps> you're blinking back tears and shit, and your heart's like pounding at a uh, hundred miles per second. Uh, it's, that's an experience you've never had before, and you probably don't. You feel it deep down. You really don't want to have it again because you were really out of control. Like you didn't feel like in control of anything, uh, other, other than what you just did, obviously. But uh, you see, everybody's looking at you. Like, are you okay, Sean? Are you all right? Yeah, I broke Frank's hand, so that's a plus. Yeah. Speaking of Frank, I just had a talk with him. Yeah, I figured you might. And I turned to Gus. Gus, shit needs to happen. Because Frank has Sean's son with Sean split. And he told me that if he doesn't have your real name, that kid's gone.
So that's the game he's playing. That's that's fucked up. Hmm. He's like, I think I know what he what he's planning on. I think I know why he wants to he wants that information. And it's probably best that he doesn't get it. As much as it pains us all to hear that. But you don't want you do not want someone like Frank Gordon with my true name. True names are powerful. I get that. So, if we can find a kid and take out the split, we take out, we, we, we remove leverage. If we get Sean's kid back, he no longer has any leverage. Okay, what kind of clock are we on with that, though? I don't know. It could be an hour, two hours, 24 hours. I have no idea. We have no idea where 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 he as is. As we can, as we've just seen, he can probably pop up into Sean at any time. So we might have to isolate Sean. Sorry, Sean. I have I have a theory about that. Um, Let's hear it. So his mindset it seemed to be that he took me over when I was mentally getting closer to his ideals and the stronger the connection became between the two. That is an excellent observation. John, go ahead and give yourself a, an, an extra reroll for the future. Oh, thank you. you can thank that one because you're correct. Uh, and that's something that uh, Gus went over when he first mm. started explaining to you what the proxy is and how it functions. If you want to turn the tables on Frank Gordon, you got to do the hard thing first. You have to be more like him. That increases your side of the proxy. And eventually you might be able to match or exceed his percentage of the of the proxy. Because think of a proxy as like a skill from zero to 100%. Right now, he has the he has you over a barrel uh, because he has the higher percentage of that proxy. He's in control of it. Um, you, on the other hand, do not. However, William and Sean are the exception to this because you have you're bound by blood. That's important in magic, or at least this kind of magic. You have a higher percentile chance to potentially affect Frank Gordon through the same proxy because th that's how proxies work. They cut both ways. Uh, the thing is, if you were to increase your uh, your side of the proxy with Franks, you would have to adopt more things about him. You'd have to dress up like him, change your name, or you'd have to adopt his philosophy, uh, become an annihilomancer. That's a big step in that direction. It gets harder before it gets easier in order for you to turn the tables on him and actually uh, like start to be able to control him instead of the other way around. Right now, though, it's it's you're on the lower end of that rung. Uh, the other way to do it is a lot more difficult, which is to distance yourself from Frank, which is to think in the opposite direction. Uh, you know, uh, change your name legally so it's no longer an anagram of his, and so on. Uh, and at least as far as like Sean is concerned, that would be a step in that direction, and that would reduce your percentage. Uh, with, of the of the proxy to zero, and once you do that, he has no control over you anymore. What that also does, it doesn't make you a target whenever someone looks for Frank Gordon, which is what he was originally intending with the proxy in the first place. He wanted to fake his death, which is why he said, "Well, well someone set fire to that orphanage, to kill everybody on board that was part of that proxy." So anybody who looked for Frank Gordon would go, "Oh, he's dead." That didn't happen because you changed things. Uh, so yeah. Uh, that would also affect it in that way as well. What you're saying is that it, you know, this familiar old blood proxy relation is not just always a physical thing, it's also a state of mind. Right. It's transcendental. Yeah. Well. So, what's I, the plan, guys? 
The plan is that if you give him my true name, if I give you that information and you give it to him... Of course we're not going to go there. What's the plan we now? Uh, we need action. Yes, and that's what we're doing. I need to speak to the clergy because we need to work out a deal. We're, bar we're, we're breaking a deal with him? I'm breaking a deal with him. So that the world doesn't end the way Frank wants it to. Is there a way to speed it up? Is there a way to speed up the number of people that join the clergy so we can reset everything as quickly as possible? There's that no, would fix everything, right? I mean, if, if everything there's resets... No, there's no magic bullet to this problem. You're talking about speeding up the the ascendancy of an of an archetype. That is something that takes generations to do in some cases. Um, There's no other way to push the reset person, button. For one person to ascend into the clergy, you're talking about one of hundreds, and that means meeting agenda. That means meeting criteria. They have to become the entire embodiment of that archetype, and that is really really difficult. You're talking about fighting other avatars that are jockeying for the same space within the clergy, whether willingly or unwittingly. Godwalkers, very powerful people. You've met some of them. He looks to Alex, who had to deal with the Dark Stalker avatar, the Godwalker, who killed a friend, who was also one. So you've already gone through that. You really want to put someone else through that, that same problem as well? It can eat up a lot of your time, and you're only talking about one avatar at a, at a time. We're talking about 333 archetypes, some of which have already ascended and others are yet to ascend. How many? Who knows? They know, though. I mean, we got a pretty fucking close timetable. Looks over, Gus. How old are you, Gus? How old, old enough. Do you look? <clears throat> and uh, who even looks at names redeemed hydrate? Names to what? Who even looks at names redeemed hydrate for 200? So, oh. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, so he's so, just yeah. like, I'm old enough. Like, uh, I don't know who's how many are left to ascend, but we're probably talking double digits right now. It takes generations. So, possibly. It sounds like we need to, we need to find where Frank is. More than anything else, we can find it where he is. Yeah, but we can go interrupt while Gus goes to talk to the um, people he needs to talk he, to. He, he, you don't want to go, uh, Frank. No, he's gonna. Rip I don't want to go where Frank pieces. is, but it seems like we have to. That's what I'm saying. No, I, I think our best bet might be to get to Sean's son as quickly as possible. I wouldn't be in a rush to find Frank yet. He says. Well, I'm yeah. thinking Frank probably has has Sean's son, and then maybe maybe we're not going to find him. He has to have yeah. good access to him to get to to obviously deal with that. Too. So I said, you I mentioned that you were able to break Frank's hand. Is this you take control of his body while he has control of yours? Yeah, it's Bodies. two way street. I couldn't. I didn't have enough time to search his purse, and that's what I was going to do. Well, um, if you if you broke his hand, I don't think he's going to try and jump back in your body anytime soon, because he realized you figured that out. So that's a that's yeah. a that's a that's a bonus for us. I, th I think yeah. I, I think we'll go ahead and all agree on uh, fuck Frank Gordon here. Um, that's a gimme. God, you're getting close to this fucking person. What you saw back turns there, my turns Hampshire. my fucking stomach. What you saw back there wasn't a nylon and see. I don't I don't I'm not in a hurry to find Frank Gordon because he's not alone. Whatever Frank Gordon is, he's getting help from somewhere. You don't just open a rift into the into the veil. You you risk uh, annoying the cruel ones. So you don't want to go there. He has someone else that's able to do that. I've only I only know of one other school of magic and a very old school of magic that is capable of doing some, something what? like that. What is it? 
I probably never heard of it, but it's thanatomancy. And I like my, my diary or like I write everything, I, I write that down. Mm. Keep records. You you're smart enough to know that Thanatomancy is derived from the ancient Greek god of Thanatos, death, right? Um, and it, it, to hear Gus describe it, it's like uh, ritualistic murder and uh, killings is fuel to that fire. It's the, it, That's what that entire school of magic revolves around. So somebody who practices that sort of death regularly, imagine that individual with the, with the power to pluck souls out of out from beyond the veil demons and put them into people fun stuff he could do it this person apparently can do it on a large scale and that's apparently what frank gordon is going for the question of course is that if he's planning on doing that he has to have some sort of way to protect himself and the people he deems as being part of his inner circle if he's not alone which he clearly isn't and that's what gus kind of alludes to and it's like and there has to be a way that he's shielding himself. If he wants this to be world over, worldwide, he has to be somewhere safe that he's planning on not having this happen, or he has to be shielded in some way, mystically. That's what I've been looking for these last couple of weeks, is trying to find him, trying to find a city that is a myst or a place somewhere in the world that's mystically shielded enough that might make a good place for him to hide. Crazy thought here. Um... Like he has to have my kid in close proximity, like you said. It's very possible that he's not shielding my son, though. You know, if I, you, you can, find my son, you might find close to where he is. That's a good idea, actually. He says, and he nods. He's like, I can teach you how to make a proxy of your son, Jackson. Oh. You find him, you find Frank Gordon. That, that comes with its own risks, however. I'll warn you right now. What's the Think risk? Think about it. We have a long trip down to Miami, after all. You know, John, um, when you were in his body, what else did you see while you were trying to break his hand? Anything else that we could use to our advantage? Somewhere underground. At least I think it is. Um, was he by himself? Was there anyone else few, there? Yeah. It was a single room, very dingy, very damp, one one slot for viewing and a people and a guard. Uh, and I was handcuffed to what was basically a pipe attached to you the can make a You can make a successful uh, notice check to see if you can remember uh, some of the smaller details. I was going to ask if you remember anything about the guard, we can use that to our advantage. Look, I can find where he is. I just need to do something really, 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 really dumb to get there. <laughs> Come uh, on, Ward. So what do you want to do? I have Hunter, and mm. this do this does loosely tie into just noticing okay. and being aware of one's surroundings. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that is a skill hunters use. Excellent. Nice. You got it then. So okay. can I switch yeah, it? You notice the okay. Yeah, you can flip. Sure. Uh, this is in pursuit of your son. That's I think that's uh, uh, your obsession currently. So yeah, you can absolutely flip that. And you're just like I remember you. You remember the the mirror and like the sounds outside when he when the peephole opened. You weren't underground. This was top level. But whatever this place was, it was almost like a like a bunker. Is what the 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 word immediately that comes into your mind. And then you look. You remember looking at the guard. And like he's some big, thick-looking dude with like uh, facial hair, and he's got like lots of facial hair, and he has like an uh, America First hat. And you're just like, oh yeah, there was that too. Whoever he was, he was uh, from what little you saw of him. That's because that, <laughs> he kind of leaned back from the slot, and he was kind of peeking in like this at you, and you got a glimpse of that. He wore an America First hat. Um, he currently, he laughed about his boss getting his hand broke, so that was fun. Um, and no, it wasn't, uh, my first instinct, it was underground, uh, but it is a reinforced bunker, it seems like. 
Okay, that could that that narrows it to a, maybe a militia or somewhere in the West, Midwest, like or actually Western states like Wy like Wyoming or Montana, maybe. A good observation, yeah, definitely possibility. Uh, you you got to go over that with everybody, and then eventually Gus is just like, well, think it over. And it's like, uh, we got a long ride to Miami. I'm gonna get back in the car. Uh, uh, that that makes gets, sense. Uh, spooked and runs off somewhere. He goes back over. He's driving instead this time. And uh, Bether is just kind of looking out the window, like <laughs> just wondering what what he did to, in order for his life to go uh, topsy turvy. At some point, he, before as Gus is walking away, see Alex is like, "Wait a minute, you didn't explain anything." So all the people in New Hampshire got possessed by fucking demons. Is that what you're trying to tell me? He's like, "Yes, that is exactly what happened." And he's like, "Why didn't we get possessed? I mean, William got possessed, right? But that was some, yeah, that was Frank Gordon." Why didn't we get possessed? And he's like, look in your pockets. Remember the thing that I gave you? She fishes out her, the photocopy of her ID, her driver's license. He's like, look closely at it. She kind of like squints. Uh, what he had done is he took everybody's IDs, he made photocopies of them, and then he kind of like blacked out the, 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 the flesh portion with like black ink and just leaving the eyes visible. But with the eyes, you notice like when you look closely at the eyes, there's little shards of glass that are hot glued to where the eyes are. And then of course there's like these strange little markings around the edges of the, the piece of paper. And he's it's like, the eyes are the windows to the soul. So I put a mirror there, tried to protect you as best as I could. And kind of takes a drag from cigarettes. He keeps walking away and Alex is just like, so if any if any one of you had not taken uh, the little trinket, like you would have been subject to possession, and then you know you would have woken up with somebody's intestines in your mouth potentially. Like a violence. That, that's a, that's the end of a bad day right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, unless anybody else has any other questions or whatever, uh, Gus is just going to get back into Pedro's car and he's going to wait for you all to start heading down the I ninety five to follow you down to Miami. That sounds good. So, uh, All right. Damien, I have to ask, when you say something stupid, and I'm in, what do you mean <laughs> something stupid? You'll see when I get there. I need to charge oh, up. Wait. Like, I need to get a really big charge. So I need to do something stupid enough where my life could potentially end. I've got a blindfold, cigarettes, and we've got a big SUV. You can always get a revolver and play Russian roulette, you know. Yeah, I can play Russian roulette. That is one hundred percent true. Oh no, no revolver. That's 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 not really that dangerous. Come on, big SUV. Really? I, I, big <laughs> SUV and I ninety five and lots of people in traffic. The odds. We outweigh all these cars by at least a ton. Come on. <laughs> Once we get to Miami. <clears throat> yeah, fuck Miami. Right. I'm, I'm I'm in. All right. Thanks for the oh. hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the rest of the trip is pretty uneventful for the most part. You, you stop the gas up and you kind of keep moving, you switch drivers, you switch out drivers and stuff. Uh, most of you are a little achy and probably a little tired at least by the time you reach Miami. You get there in the daytime. It's like a you know hot in the afternoon. You know, even in August, this place is a swamp. Oh. Uh, busy streets. You know, uh, you're going into close to downtown Miami so the streets get narrower and uh, you get like those, those cobblestone streets in certain areas like one ways and uh, he takes you down to Little Havana it's this little place right off the highway and it's inside this desolate looking uh, shopping sh shopping mall of, some, of sorts uh, all failed businesses all of them gone boarded up uh, for sale sign nobody wants to buy it in the corner uh, hidden away next to an old scuba store that went out of business a long time ago is this little shop this, or what used to be like a a uh, like a law firm of some sort and like the name is uh, still there but underneath it there's like this, this, these faded little uh, letters from the previous business and you, you can read it as, once you get close enough to it it says the Bon Ton. Uh, 
the the and then B O N and then T O N. Three words. Uh, you don't know what it means, but uh, that is what you see, and that is what uh, Gus explains is where he's supposed to be meeting with the clergy. He's like, hey. right. This is um, this is where we uh, where we split up. He looks over to Pedro, and Pedro just looks back at him, and he's like, uh, "Can I have my car back now, please?" <laughs> yeah, claro que sí. He says, "Thank you for your help." He puts a wad of cash on the dashboard, and Pedro's eyes go wide. He's like, "Have a nice life." He exits the vehicle. He's there counting money <laughs> as he gets out, and he's like, "All right, boys and girls, ready to go." I'm gonna need to borrow you again. He points at Alex. He's like, yeah, yeah, I know the drill. She says, he shuts the door. He's like, the rest of you may want to hang out here unless you want to witness what's gonna happen inside. Hey, Damien. Uh, you said you needed a charge, yeah? Uh, <laughs> I got an idea. Go ahead. Well, don't ask questions. And I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll go to, uh, go off to like the nearest like pawn store or something. Uh, you have to actually leave the plaza to go find a pawn shop, but there's like one down the street, you know. That's sure. I, don't, find on there. I really don't want to be party to whatever's going on here anyway. So I'll head down the street. I'm a, I'll get you that charge. Be right back. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, so you start heading away. Let's see. Hold on. What are you going to do at the pawn shop while everybody else is here? Uh, I'm going to do exactly what... Um, exactly what they said in the cars. I'm going to buy a, a six-shot pistol. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you were just like, I'm going to go do a thing. And, uh, okay. <laughs> I was thinking. You really buy, are buying a revolver. It. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to buy a revolver. I'll message you on the side. All right. Uh, it is, um, it's gonna cost you like 300 bucks, I wanna say, for the revolver, so it's like, you know, 250, 350, something like that. He puts 10% of his paycheck away per week, I think he'll, he'll be alright. Yeah, I think he'll be alright. So yeah, you pay up front, you pay cash or whatever. Uh, well, yeah, there's a waiting list, you know. And then he kinda uh, like, <laughs> unless you wanna try to bribe him and try to like fast track the, uh, the paperwork or whatever. Hey, look, man. You're a hunter. Uh, you're, 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 you know, intimately aware with, like, the uh, legalities and such. And what the real uh, legalities are. Yeah, paperwork, paperwork is there. I got 200 bucks. I leave the shop with the gun right now. <laughs> okay, that sounds good. Thanks. Yeah, you're like, here's 500. Taking the gun. All right. Um, so you're busy doing that. You're picking one out. The rest of you are back, and you're watching Alex and Gus walk into the Bonton. Uh, the abandoned business, as it were. There's a security system in place. Like, there's cameras and alarm and all this other stuff. Gus just goes and, open, like, tugs on the door and just comes open. <laughs> there's, like, a beep, 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 beep. And then that's it. And he just walks inside. Are any of you doing anything? Or are you staying put inside the car or waiting outside smoking? What are you doing? I know better. I'm staying in the car. Wise choice. <laughs> Damien? I'm waiting to see what Sean's going to pop up with what I have a pretty good idea. <laughs> okay. Because uh, I was yes. thinking of doing the same thing. Ah. Need a quick significant charge? There's one easy way to go at it. Yeah? Last time, uh... Last time we were together, I, uh... Remember throwing the tree ant basically, like, uh... in the back seat of... Mm -hmm one of the van or the SUV, and so I'm going to be back there, like, I guess tinkering with it, and kind of keeping an eye on the door to watch for them to come back out. Okay, um, you can actually, if you spent the majority of the trip down um, tinkering on something, go ahead and give yourself a minor charge. Cool. Are you tinkering on your stuff and, like, trying to make adjustments and stuff like that? You're, like, cobbling together different things? Mm -hmm. Um... Okay. You see, eventually, uh, Gus goes inside uh, with with Alex, and the rest of you kind of hang back. Lucius is just sort of staring out and out the window, not saying anything. 
He seems to be in reflection of something. Uh, Gus goes inside and uh, he shuts the door and he tells you, you know the routine, get over there, sit on the chair. I'll be right back. He starts gathering all these old phones and things like that. And eventually he uh, he rigs it up. It takes like 30 minutes to, for him to just do it by himself, but eventually he conducts the ritual. And this time something happens inside the room. Like you see lights pouring out of it, like bright white lights coming out of it. In the afternoon, it's not that noticeable from on the street, but you're right there. You see it happen. Uh, the, the whole inside of the place is bathed in white light. And then it's just gone. And all of a sudden, all sorts of people start pouring out of the building. Not like in great numbers or anything, like two or three at a time. They're dressed really weird, though. Some of them look like they're from different eras entirely. And they're just sort of looking around like, oh, looking at things curiously. There's an old Victorian woman who's like sort of like doting after one other person who's just like, ah, like playing with their hair and like, uh, skipping along like a little schoolgirl or something like down the sidewalk and like looking at dead plants and stuff like that nearby and you're just like the shit is going on here Pedro sees this and he's like okay I'm out <laughs> he just turns around and he leaves you don't see him again um, but what are you all doing while that's happening watching yeah just watching Some people right, notice the van and things and they're like I right, start the SUV and make sure the air conditioning is on. <laughs> okay. Uh, staying cool in Miami, that's a good idea. Uh, it is baking hot outside. So, yeah, you see some rather strange-looking people come out, and some of them come out, they have a smoke or whatever, and then they go back in. And then you don't see them come back out again. Uh, eventually, as after the ones that are outside are called by somebody else that the, who looks like a like a cowboy, no other way to put it. Long, dusty coat uh, with a wide brimmed hat. Oh, permanent five o'clock shadow. He's just kind of long hair, you know. He motions for them to come come back in, and they all kind of like, oh, okay, to come back inside the room. Are you staying put? This is around the time that Sean would be coming back with the uh, revolver. Yeah, not not getting out of the car. Not trusting this. <laughs> One bad experience is enough. Thank you. All right, cool. Uh, John, you're back. Uh, weird stuff is happening at the uh, abandoned uh, shopping plaza. A bunch of weird-looking people stepped out, and they were just stepping back in when you happened to be walking right back over to where the rest of these people are sitting down in the van. What do you want to do? You have a weird right over in a paper bag. Where where did all the uh, bad medieval cosplayers come from? <laughs> yeah. You see, Lucy's right. like, yeah, he's... they came out of nowhere, he says. And then I think they went back to nowhere. And he goes back to staring out the window. Yeah, excellent, oh, excellent. Yeah, um, I'm going gonna... to walk over to Damien. He is thoroughly unimpressed. Like, this is this is not the weirdest thing that has happened this week. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> So he is, he's going to walk over to Damien and uh, spin the barrel on the pistol. Whoa, here? Yeah, here. <laughs> Sp what, what, you want to you wanna fucking wait? There's nobody around but these fuckers, and I'm pretty sure they're in on it. Let's go. And he, sp he spins another couple of times waiting for Damien to answer. For Damien. Uh, yeah, you're just like, thinking it over like oh shit we're really gonna do this huh uh you see eventually the, the little girl that you saw skipping around outside like, comes back out and uh she goes up to one of the windows in the van and like knocks on it and waves <laughs> you see at uh, the the doting uh older woman in the victorian garb hovers out of the uh the uh, the bonton and she's just like now i told you several times to come here and stay by my side we're not where we used to be you know and you see she kind of like moves in that direction back. towards the van the, as soon as she gets within like five or ten feet of the uh of the van the the whole thing shuts off no air conditioning you're sweltering in the van now and you see she's like what is this contraption she says and she's like touching it like tapping it oh and she looks in. There's people inside there. Were they swallowed? And you see the Here. young girl's like, I think so. 
I'll make I'll make the tree wave back at them. You see, like <laughs> you see, they look at the. Apparently, this beast has a name. It's called Ford. And like they, they point to the. the car. And you see, eventually the. Yes, uh, my name is Ford. This is my beast. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, Jace, when you look at the woman in the Victorian garb, you can't help but think of what happened to your mother. What what did happen to Jace's family? Are they still around? Um, his father is. His mother died in a boating accident when he was 14. You're reminded of her for some reason when you look at her and you see her like sort of doting over this little girl. Uh, she catches your glance through the glass and she smiles at you for a moment. Um, do you have any notches failed or hardened in isolation? I have a failure in isolation, yes. Get rid of it. All right. Wow. She smiles at you and waves. I she open the car door and do something incredibly stupid and get out. <laughs> Excellent. She goes back into the into the room with the little girl. Uh, Mom? <laughs> she doesn't seem to hear you. She's doting over the little girl or whatever, but she keeps going uh, inside. You pursue? I follow her like an idiot. <laughs> I'm a fool. I'm going to follow her. She seems to notice that you're coming up behind her, and she's like, oh, I'm going to help you, young man. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. Do, do I know you? I don't believe we've met, no. Who are you? I'm me of my mother. Mother, you say? Do you miss your mother? I haven't seen her for 20, 20 years. Oh, my she, poor boy, she says. And she puts, she reaches out her hand and she's like, I'm so sorry. And she touches your shoulder. And the moment she does that, uh, you see, like, her face drops for a second and comes back up and she's like, Jace? Is this you? And then she touches your face. Oh my, oh my God. It really is you. How have you been, where are we? She says, she looks, she looks around. What the fuck is going on? For the first time in his life, Jace has no words. <laughs> yeah, you're the, struck stupid the, for a moment. The, you're the, just like. The, his face just all the blood comes out of his face. Mm -hmm. Purely, purely struck white. Um, scare. He looks obviously terrified. To anybody who's watching, just that terrified, like um, not necessarily walking on his grave. He's reaching out and touching him through a grave. Like a natural check. You see, she's like, "Oh my, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, I wish, I wish things could be different. I didn't." None of this was planned, you know. I, I wish. I wish you knew what it was like. She says, I, "I made the check. I rolled a forty-eight. Thank God." Don't. But, uh, whatever you uh, do, don't, don't, don't bring us back out like this. There's, we don't. We shouldn't be out here like this. If when we do, they they look for us, you know. She says, and she looks around over over her shoulder, the cruel ones. Don't let them get us, please. Don't let, them get the, don't let the cruel ones get us. Um, of course. I won't let, I won't let the cruel ones get, get, get you. Um, you um, it's what happens to us when we go beyond the veil, Jace. They look like angels, but they're not. They're wardens. <laughs> and they and we're there, and they're just, they torture us endlessly. It's just don't if you if you see us if you see us here in the world don't let us go back it's probably better that we never come out but if we're out don't let us go back whatever you do then, it's then terrible stay, there then, then stay don't, here don't with us it. stay here with I us i can't i can't the longer i stay the, the sooner they'll arrive and they can hurt you they can hurt all of you he says he looks around at everybody else here I have to go back. I'm sorry, she says. And with that, she gives you a hug. And then all of a sudden, the lady is like, oh, oh. 
so sorry. I didn't mean to be so untoward. I'm so sorry about the loss of your mother, my boy. And she like touches your face and you feel warm inside. Like there's like there's a catharsis there that you've not mm -hmm. felt in over 20 years. And right. uh, with that, she kind of turns around and she walks back into the building. What do you do? He's, he's fighting tears so bad. But his eyes are weak from not sleeping so much, and so of course it just starts. It just takes a few seconds, and he's just streaming, and he's trying screaming? not to let anyone see. He's oh. just yeah. You're just like tears. we're just like crouched down, and you're just like fighting the you know the. the He'll sit down in the parking lot on mm -hmm. one of the uh, you know the the, uh, the the concrete bumpers, his head in his hands, mm -hmm. and just sit there and sob. What um? What are the rest of you doing? You're inside the van. You're seeing this happen. Like this, some, something happens to Jason. He just goes over and he's got his head in his hands. He looks like he's crying. Uh, what are you doing, Damien? Uh, Sean just came back with a revolver. While yeah, this, uh, so exchange is taking place. Chase is there pouting and crying. I'm just gonna like boo. So you need another. You need a partner for this, right? I mean, it's not a game unless somebody else plays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Boxes of paper. Ah, uh, no need to pull to put the gun up, pull trigger. <laughs> oh, wow! Who's holding the gun and who's pulling the trigger? Sean yeah. is like pulling on himself. Who? Yeah. Oh, that's not how that works. Sean. Oh, it's not how the game works. Okay. Actually, actually, the game it would work because I will pull next. Oh shit. Okay, so if you agree to this game of Russian roulette with uh, Sean, with the uh, yeah, with Sean, if you both agree to play this game as, it, as it's called, uh, trigger warning. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. You, yeah. You will, uh, God damn. Then you will basically be entered into this uh, this risk, this cosmic risk uh, uh, game play uh, between your characters. Uh, basically, it's one bull each i agree for one pull so, each you're putting two in the revolver no one one oh, bullet just, okay okay one bullet so, one pull each okay who goes first sean sean yeah. already like spin and pulled so yeah okay sean <laughs> i need you to choose a number and then roll a d6 oh shit oh. just any <laughs> number what, what's our scale here I mean, one, it's, to it's, it's, one to six. It's one to six. One to six. Right. six. So you have to call what number it is, and then you have to roll a d6. If you roll that number, you die. Oh shit, Sean. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Go for it. Uh, let's do five. Okay. <gasps> Woo! Click. Uh, you uh, gain uh, a significant uh, charge. I gain a charge, right? Oh my god. <laughs> Because that's how the game is played. Now it's your turn. I pick up the revolver. I spin twice. I didn't think anybody would think would think seriously to take this up. I just threw it out there. But okay. One. Choose a number. One. One. Roll a d6. Oh. You oh. the opposite of that. Very good. Two significant charges. You want to press oh, so your I'm luck? At three now. Or do you want to quit while you're ahead? Uh, I I click. Put it down. And I'm like, we're done. <laughs> oh my god! You see, Alice's like, what the fuck are you people doing? And she's like, no, 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 we're not doing that here. We're not doing that here. What the fuck are you doing? And you're just like, we have to do this. Still <laughs> 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 so staring out the window, like, yep, that's the thing that's happening right now. <laughs> Gambling with each other's lives. <laughs> that was one hell of a rush, okay. though. I thought about offering Jesse, to play uh, too, but uh, then uh, I mentioned wouldn't, the stakes wouldn't be the same. I mentioned that the stakes wouldn't be the same for me because I'm pretty sure I could survive that bullet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you've got that going on, and uh, is everybody else staying in the van while and waits for the Compte to be finished doing his, his business inside? If so, then we'll proceed. So how does getting three significant charges feel like? It feels like you're a fucking rock star. <laughs> uh, 
uh, like you're like you just drank like 12 Red Bulls or something like you're just like ugh, you're super amped and like you just you feel it crackling through your body like uh, like you're, you're hooked up to an amplifier. You know what I mean? That's what you feel like, like a human amplifier of cosmic uh, chaos. Right. God. OK. <laughs> yeah. So you're just like, oh, man, you've got you've got the juice now. Uh, eventually, the comp the, the lights flash on and off on the on the inside of the 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 bonton like the you know the there's there's wind inside or something like the the uh the blinds are like flapping in the windows and stuff and all of a sudden everything calms back down alex and oh, sorry alex wasn't in there my bad um uh, alex and the comp did leave uh the premises and you see alex just kind of sits down and it's like oh, fucked you see uh gus comes back out and it's like okay deal's been struck we're going to move in on Frank Gordon first thing, as, as soon as possible. But there is one thing that's happening here that, that is a part of the deal that I just made with the clergy. And we have to address it. <clears throat> and it's like, I need, and then of course, I'm, I'm going to need your help on this because if we're going to get started on tracking down Frank Gordon, I need to be the, spe- the, the tip of that spear. Right now, we've right. got some problems right. brewing right here in Miami. There is a archetype that is emerging here, one that didn't exist previously. That's a threat to the clergy. That's a problem. Uh, They want this investigated. Whatever this entity is, it's gaining power and it's getting traction. And this can become a real issue later on. They believe that this entity is behind a lot of disappearances with young children within the homeless community in South Miami. It's like, I'm going to need you to go to the rescue mission and start uh, turning over some stones. Jace, you're going to... What the hell is Jace? He <laughs> looks over and sees him, like, <laughs> head in his hands. Like, I, I, I've looked up at this point, but, but it's obvious I've been crying. Yeah, and he's just like, Jace, you're going to assist in that regard. What the fuck were you people doing out here? He says, and looks at you. He looks at the, the majority of you, like... <laughs> Uh, it's okay, pe- boss. No, it's I, okay. I hold the pistol out to him and be like, "Well, um, this wouldn't do anything to you, so you can't play." I put it back. <laughs> I, to, I I tell him I had to charge up. There are better ways to do that, you know. I know, but I need it now. Yeah, he's <laughs> like, take your winnings and and you know. Cut it off at that, otherwise you may, your not blessings. Get, you may not get that lucky again, he says. Yeah. He's like, all right, I'm going to have to take my leave now. I have some things I need to get into preparation. We're going to go after Frank Gordon and whatever militia or group is he's uh, associated with now. Okay. And he's like, uh, go ahead and uh, do what you got to do here. If you need help. I'll be at the house. And he says, he writes down this address and he hands it to you. And he's like, actually, he's, he doesn't say the house. He's like, I'll be at my old house, he says. He writes you address. He hands it to uh, one of you, Damien. Uh, or, well, hand it to Jace, actually. He'll give it to you. He's like, I'll be at my sure. old house if you need me. Right. I, I remember. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. We can. We'll be, we'll be there. Keep it together. All right. Yeah, no, it's, it's okay. It just it's just been a long trip. Sure it has. He says and he kind of walks away. Uh Alex is just kind of like sitting moping a little bit in the back of the van. Um what are the majority of you doing? You see he's just kind of walking <laughs> walking aimlessly down the street as he tends to do when he's uh, you know walking around doing his thing. Um he gave you a address also for this rescue mission in South Miami. Uh, if you want to, you can head there when you want to, unless you want to like set up shop somewhere else. He did give you the address to his his house, and oh, he kind of dug into his pockets and he's like, "This should work." And he hands you a set of keys, like one key, that should let you into the house. So you have the keys to his house, so to speak, and then you have the address. Uh, okay. If you need to like, if you don't trust going to Motel Six or some place like that, you can crash at the conference. Why, why don't we just go to his house set up and then we can go look at this rescue mission that 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 sound okay to everybody yeah he says he's gonna be busy for a little while so he'll probably be there later in the evening he'll find his way over there he says in the meantime you're free to go 
Um, he's in an area probably like Coral Gables, like some downtown hoity-toity place or whatever with like the, instead of uh, street signs, they have like a stone on the corner. And yeah, then on that stone, they put, the, <laughs> they put the numbers. Yeah, you know you know what that nightmare is like. Yeah, so uh, you're navigating through there, you're like trying to not to get lost, like uh, as it's getting dark, you know. But eventually you find his house and uh it's a nice little place actually uh looks like it hasn't been used in a while like the weeds and shit are like up to here but uh you're free to go inside and make yourself at homes <laughs> as much as, as home as as it, as it can be for somebody like uh gus <laughs> and jermaine um Empty house, not swear you hear a dog, dog barking in the backyard and when you look there's nothing there I don't need any more of this goat shit. I don't need any more of this goat shit. Fuck that crap. <laughs> you're still a fucking ghost today. Something about ghost shit, and you're just like, what are you that's getting off of? Let's, uh, so we were supposed to find the avatar. This new avatar. There's an archetype. Or yeah, archetype. there's an archetype that's, that's developing, that's getting power in Miami that previously wasn't part of the clergy, never was. This is like a new phenomenon that's emerging. And that's a, a threat to the clergy. They don't want it. Do we know and what it's it is? Causing problem in the area. You have no idea what it is. No, they don't know just, what I it just, is. They just know it's just, a problem. They know there's something happening. There. Just want to make sure we got set up here before we go check that out. Okay. Place go inside and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, you open it up. It's like a little driveway with a, you know, one car garage type of thing. One story house, very plain Jane. Uh, not 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 as sophisticated as you were expecting. Uh, not very well furnished on the inside either. Uh, paints old and cracking along the walls. It almost seems to be like a, uh, almost a, if it were if, like a living, a, uh, like a monument to the the Gus's uh, current status. <laughs> He's an old, decrepit old man. That's what this place looks like as well. Got it. Uh, no pictures anywhere. Makes Although, sense. when you look around, you notice that there were pictures here once upon a time there's just like the impression of a frame on lurking on some of the the walls here it looks like somebody took all of them down there's a fucking dog barking in the backyard god damn it you see uh alex just gonna sit looks around finds a couch and plops herself onto it lucius joins her and sort of like you okay and she's like (laughs) <laughs> nods a little, like slightly like mm-hmm. <laughs> like she she obviously had an experience back at the ton barn. I'm gonna go look for the dog. There is no dog. I'm gonna hang out here. out here. <laughs> Just outside of you, when you turn, you look at this like the sound disappears. I'm gonna try to catch it. Move around, and you're like. It's a pretty fair-sized backyard. You're pretty sure you didn't hear a na- the neighbor's dog. The neighbor's dog is asleep. Uh, but its ears are perking up, and you're, when you go to look, and you're just like, what the fuck was that? I heard a dog. Like, it was right here. Is there, like, any patio furniture in the backyard? Yes. There's an old um, gazebo in the back. Like a lawn chair or something like that? Yeah. I want to. I want to kind of, like just sit myself down watching for this dog that I keep hearing. You're there and, for a long time. <laughs> yep. Uh, as it starts to get dark, you hear... I probably don't notice. Farces of it. Yeah, yeah. like you, you hear like little bits and pieces, but like it, it's... It's it, always it just manifests. outside of you. Yeah. No, it, it doesn't show up. It's not that thing like it's just at the edge of your perception or something like that. It's just like you hear the sounds of a dog and there's no dog there. It's weird. Um... And, I'll start uh, recording it. Cool. That's that's interesting. <laughs> There's like I know I'm hearing sound. Like I'm I'm not going crazy. Uh, the rest of you are inside. Like I said, it's not. It's very sparsely furnished. Uh, There's like no food in the refrigerator or anything mm-hmm. like that. Uh, so yeah. Can we order? <laughs> of course. Who's up for pizza? Clothes or anything? Yeah, you can order food and uh, you order some pizza or whatever, and get a delivery person to come by uh, in about thirty minutes. Yeah. And, Pies. I'm gonna need some pineapple on mine. Thanks. <laughs> Crazy person. 
So all right, you order some pizza. Um, you are you doing anything before the next day? Or you're, you're there's several rooms to this house. Uh, specifically, there are three three rooms and what appears to be like a guest room. Uh, so four in total. So you can like double up in, in different rooms or somebody can crash on the couch, whatever you want to do, however you want to handle it. Uh, you can stake out different rooms for yourselves. You can tell though, like going into one room or the other that it used to belong to somebody. Like you see one of them was a, um, was they're much, one of them was like a master bedroom that was intended for like a couple. And then the other ones were like intended for like, you know, children. Uh, one of them in particular smells like old candy, like a you know like the, like it, uh, as if somebody took an entire evening's earnings of Halloween candy, dumped it out on the floor, and left it there for like thirty years. That's what it smells like. It's like there's a residue of it like on the walls and on the old shag carpeting. All right, so I sit next to Sean. All right. I pull up my cell phone. I go on Google. Mm -hmm. And I tell Sean, let's take a look where your kid is at now. Ah, you're going to ask the universe for, for an answer? I'm going to use uh, anthropomancy significant spell called I Feel Lucky. Uh -huh. So it costs one significant charge, and the effect is while you're at a search engine, think hard about someone or something, type the first <laughs> thing that comes into your mind and click the search button. The first search result tells you where you need to go, the phone number of someone you need to reach, or another big step in what you seek. Ah, huh. okay. And uh, if I ever, so I ask Sean, like, do you by any chance have a picture of your son? Yeah, I, I I have a little pocket wallet. Can you take it at a bad bad it, photo booth, you know? Yeah, here you go. Can I see it? And what's the full name of your son? Jackson. <laughs> didn't th didn't think about this beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> Jackson Ford, I would imagine. Was. Is he well, a middle he, name? Yeah, he's got a middle name. Um, okay, so... Jackson Damien Ford. Yeah, that sounds... <gasps> well, well, key, but it works. Okay, cool. Well, then. So I, I think... I look at the image and I focus on the picture. I, I, I think about the name. And, like, I, I want to know where he is right now. At this very moment. And give me a second, my kid just can, popped up. Can I, think I about, since since you're using absurd luck, can I utilize my my avatar to, to get involved with this? Because it's absurd hmm. luck, and it's what's what I excel at. Yeah, yeah, I could sure. I'm gonna assist. Just a walk over, put my hand on Damien's shoulder, and um, let the influence pass through. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, go ahead and make an entrepreneurial roll, Alan. And uh, all right, you can make it a, a channel roll. And I have to to, to, to to put something in the search engine. Like the first thing that comes to mind is uh, Philly Cheese Steak Submarine. <laughs> what it is? Yep, that's what I that's what I write in the search engine. And <laughs> let's roll. Seventy nine. Oh God! Come on. <gasps> I have one reroll re left. Oh damn! Okay. So I'm down to zero rerolls. Let's mm, reroll. Oh come on! Oh, I flip it. There you go. All Nicely right, so you got it. Excellent. That's a nine. That's a nine. <laughs> uh, and did you make your channel roll? Oh no, you blew it by. Oh shit! Wait, no, I didn't roll, did you? Well, I yeah, I rolled a fifty-two, so I failed. Oh, there it is. Okay, I see it now. So you made you is that underneath your your avatar? No, my my, my my avatar is a forty. Is it your do obsession you though? Use Could you any flip of it? Your passions. Yeah. Do you have an obsession? Actually, or do you have passions? You know what? Um, 
This is a son being uh, without his father. I don't know if, I, if that would tie in with any of your passions, with, uh, with given your your history. Oh, uh, my noble is you know believing people can be better than they actually are to each other. And watching the way Damien's been acting lately is this he's just this chaotic being, and so he's actually doing something for the better of somebody else. So I can I can get behind this. This is actually him doing mm. something, risking his life initially to get to a point where he's actually doing something really good to help. So I uh, yeah. Let's flip that with Noble. Interesting. So this isn't, um, Alan, this is uh, the spell that you're casting. It doesn't directly like link you to Jackson, like through a cell phone or something like that. But like you, it basically puts you, it, you, you're calling out to whatever the place is that your his son is at. Is that mm. more or less correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's location I'm going for. Huh. Okay. Because the spell here, it says the first search result tells you where you need to go or the phone number of someone I'm trying to reach or another big step. Right now, it's like, where do I need to go to find his son? And you said the first thing that came up was like Philly Cheese Steak Sub? I don't know. That's what I wrote in the search engine because that, that's what oh, the spell okay. is asking for, it says. Uh, right, while right. you're at a search engine, think hard about someone or something. Type the first thing that comes into your mind and click mm. the search button. I just thought of like Philly cheese steak for some reason, and I just pushed. I'm on Google. I clicked. I'm feeling lucky. There you go. That's. I, I was thinking the exact same thing. Yeah, I'm feeling lucky. Click. And it comes up with a um, with an image of a of a national park in the northwest, and shows like cabins and lakes and tall trees and stuff like that. And it's like okay um, yeah and you see like it's it's a uh, it, it takes you directly to the website and it shows you like who the proprietors are like you know it's oh it's a it's a well it's I, bookmark, a, I bookmark this website on my phone yeah just see, make sure i don't lose it yeah you see it's a, it's a it's a uh was a national park and then it was sort of privatized and it got bought out by uh, a group, uh, these different groups that wanted to use it for their own purposes, and they basically still use it sort of as a park uh, where people can go, you know, camping or whatever. But there are certain areas of it that are cordoned off that are, are considered private property. Property. Okay. And that's that is the link that you find, and this is. Um, so I show Sean, and I'm like, "Your kid is somewhere over there." Yeah, it's. Um, I like the idea. I was gonna say Seattle and or sorry, um, uh, Washington, Washington State initially, but then I was like, no, nah, uh, Wyoming's good. <laughs> that's that's, that's, that's so where Mike's he's that's somewhere better. over there. That park somewhere in Wyoming. Put my hand on his shoulder. Yeah, um, and just kind of like my eyes are starting to tear up, and just. Uh, I I appreciate what you've done and uh, uh, I'm I'm sorry you went through what you went through to get this done hmm. that's how I charge up so don't worry about it <laughs> but can we agree that's a pretty fucked up way to charge up let's be fair it is but <laughs> that's yeah. what I am now excellent well, yeah, you found out some very interesting, very important information uh, this evening, uh, just after you, or while you're waiting for pizza or whatever. Uh, Jesse, you hear that fucking dog again? This time it sounds like it's trying to dig underneath the, the gazebo. Like it's like they're scrounging around down there. Uh, do you take a look? Yeah, I also checked to see if the recording heard it. It did. It showed up in the All recording, right, cool. but it sounded kind of like distance, like very like. Like a, like almost like a like an echo, you know. But then I look to see wherever I thought the sound was coming from and see if I can find anything there. Yeah, you like you listen to it again, and this time when you when you listen to the recording, you almost hear other voices in the background, like uh, calling out to it, like "Hey, come here!" and like the sounds that weren't there originally, like almost like they're echoes of the past. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, something happened in this house. And you see, when you listen to the recording again, you hear, come here, Lucy, come here. And it sounds like Gus, like his voice. Lucifer, come here. 
and you see that you hear like the and then just as you review as you play that back you hear like a like underneath where the gazebo is and you hear like a like you know how dogs sound yeah. like when they're burrowing that's what you hear happening underneath the gazebo i like jump down there and take a look grab my phone for a light you like pry it open get a light and shine it mm -hmm. down there and you see there's like a there's like a softly dug mound where you heard the digging coming from underneath the gazebo is there an object that was uncovered it looks like there's something that's buried there I i'll finish the job why not okay you get, it's a little cramped in confines, but you get down there and you start like unearthing some of the, the dirt. Well, actually, Look. I'll build a digging robot to do it. Oh, I have yeah. Plenty you, of minor you, add another, you add another appendage to your tree ant and it's like, <laughs> starts like <laughs> digging up the dirt for you. That works. <laughs> or, yeah, you can construct a little yeah, thing. Yeah, just like a like, specific, <laughs> it's just a digger robot. That's All it. Right. It has one identity dig. <laughs> at, at, at 50% and then some wounds. Exactly 50% actually. So cool. Fully to you. Uh, you see this thing kind of scuttles over like and starts like starts uncovering what's there. Eventually it comes back out and it leaves you enough room there where you can act because it hits something metal. What the fuck? And like you, go, you crawl down there and you look uh, with this light and it looks like it's a strong box. You open it up and inside, there are letters, old letters, moldy letters, with Gus's real name on it. Letters to his family. And that's where we'll stop. Oh. All right. Oh, man. Well, that's all the time we have for this session. I hope everyone here and those watching enjoyed the show. We'll continue our adventure into the occult underground next Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you enjoyed tonight's program, feel free to check out our other awesome adventures and terrifying tales. In the way of awesome adventures, this Tuesday we have Squeaks in the Deep on the Onyx Path channel. Wednesdays brings us the fan favorite Fallout Radiation Radioactive Summers, run by our very own Space Lord Pajamas. And coming soon on Thursdays and Fridays, Star Trek Dauntless and Scarred Lands Dracogenesis. Also coming soon on Saturdays in August is Mutant Year Zero, Road to Eden. For terrifying tales, Mondays we have They Came From Beyond the Grave. Check out Chronicles of Darkness, Maze the Awakening, Book 1, Defiance on Tuesdays. Alien the RPG, Acid and Ice on Thursdays. Contagion Chronicle continues on Fridays, along with Ravenloft Torment. Saturdays we're doing Simba Room, Heirs to Darkness, and Werewolf, Rite of Passage. And later this evening, we bring you the V20 Anniversary Chronicle, Starlight and Snow. Don't forget to, to check out the Tabletop Titties on Fridays and Saturdays. They're a queer and feminist, feminist uh, TTRPG podcast and streaming group run entirely by people with marginalized genders. For more information, visit TabletopTitties.com. And remember, every time we say titties, it's with double Ds. And now, for those of you who stayed after the credits rolled, it's time to vote for favorites. All players in this game can select another player as their favorite for the session for any reason. Recipients get a reward in the form of a reroll for their character. For viewers, voting is open as well. You two can choose a new favorite each week for all shows. But you have to be quick. Voting for the session ends just after the closing reel finishes. So be sure to cast your votes in the Twitch chat as soon as you can. Beginning with uh Corey, who is your favorite and why? Oh. oh I think I'm gonna I, I think I'm gonna toss it over to Damien. A because Damien mentioned being out of rerolls, and I think that's a terrible oh. idea for Damien to be out of rerolls. <laughs> yeah. B, that whole the the whole charging mechanics have always been entertaining, but today was filled with two really good ones. So, yeah, agreed, uh, agreed. Yeah. Nice. Um, and Alan, who played Damien, who's your favorite? Um, I'm giving my vote to Sean for starting the whole significant charge thing by picking up a pistol and like getting in the van and going like, all right, let's go. Like, okay, this yeah, is getting real. <laughs> yep. Nice. Um, and John, who played Sean? Uh, this is, who's uh, your favorite one? Um, I mean, I got to give it, I got to give the respect to Damien for going with me on a on a trip. 
I fucking loved it. <laughs> be, I'll be honest with you. It was a I great was fully, scene. I loved it too. I was fully ready to go. All right, let's make another one. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like who's losing his character right here, right now. <laughs> yeah. I mean that's that's just that's just Sean. This was a step. Let's get it done. <laughs> um, yeah, this was awesome. Uh, and last but certainly not least, uh, Mike, who is your favorite? Uh, I'm definitely going to give it to, to, to John because uh, I, during the scene with Sean and he had been possessed, and I could hear the character mulling over in his head. I could, I'm, I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn in Gus. Fuck, fuck this. I'm, I'm going to turn in Gus. My son's more important mm-hmm. than that. That was, I could just hear the gears. He did the same thing. I, I can hear the gears turning in his head, yeah. and it was really, it really kind of like it was stressful. Like, oh man, <laughs> I, I know if I were him, I probably would have given up the ghost on Gus. So yeah. you know, that was, that was pretty, pretty brave. Love that. Yeah. So, yeah, excellent. Oh, you can give yourself one uh, just because, you know, you're going to need the reroll, believe me. <laughs> so I can give yourself a, a reroll for the, for the session. Um, excellent. Good to be uh, excellent with each other. Uh, I've been Eric at Maroon Recluse on Twitter. You can find me here later tonight for Starlight and Smoke. Big thanks as always to our patrons for supporting what we do. If you want to be awesome and do the same, uh, check out the Patreon page at patreon.com slash Tales and keep up to date on what we're doing throughout the month by checking the updated calendar on warpletales.com. Thanks to you, our viewers, for, and your fans for tuning in. As always, stay charged, never play a drinking game with a booze hound, and don't violate your taboos. Good night, everybody. Bye!